Test one, two, test one, two. I can. You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show presented by and John Deere. Pleasant. Good afternoon, everyone, from Fireman's Park in Columbus. Daily Dodge TV and 95.3 WBEV proudly present Columbus High School football. Today, it's a Division IV Level Two playoff game. The Baldwin Woodville Blackhawks are in town to take on your Columbus Cardinals. Hi again, everybody. Mike Tronson at the field, and I'm joined by my good friend and partner, Tim Haldeman. We've got the ninja, Justin Wilski. Here is our videographer and engineer. He's assisted by Alex. And we've got Kyra back at the 95.3 Studios engineering our radio simulcast today. And we welcome you to this broadcast, which is brought to you by our presenting video sponsors, Columbus Family Dental and Hometown Glass and Improvement. Today's game is also brought to you by John Deere Horicon Works, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Lamers Bus Lines, Farmers and Merchants Union Bank, Prairie Ridge Health, your Dare to Dream team at EXP Realty, Kestrel Ridge Golf Course, Cardinal Lanes in Columbus. Today's game is also brought to you by Ergo Bank, Columbus Country Club, Surefire, Richards Insurance, Bayside Supper Club, Landmark Credit Union, Preferred Dental Partners, Air Care, Metal Craft of Mayville, Slumberland, Craft Heinz, Great Harvest, and Jerry's Automotive. Welcome in to our pregame show brought to you by the good folks at John Deere Horicon Works. We're about oh, a little less than uh, 30 minutes away from kickoff of this level two game, and it is a beautiful Saturday afternoon for high school football, and this should be a fun matchup. Both of these teams victorious, obviously, last week in their first-round playoff matchups. And Tim Haldeman, you know, we talk about uh, the playoffs in general, about how games are never easy this time of year. Well, Columbus sure made it look easy last week against Altoona, a 63-6 to victory right here on this field. And uh, now, in all fairness, Altoona was pretty banged up, but Columbus, they just uh, dominated in that game. Colton Brunel, four touchdowns, 241 yards rushing on 15 carries. Uh, it was uh, Brady Link with two touchdowns in the game. Connor Roach had two touchdowns and three carries for 157 yards. Uh, they were pretty good on both sides of the ball. Well, Mike, uh, you talk about them dominating last week. They've been dominating the entire season except for three quarters against Lodi. Other than those three quarters, Mike, in which uh, the game was uh, a one-score game with roughly 11 minutes to go in the ball game, and then they ended up winning by, uh, what, uh, 
32, eh, let's see, whatever it was, 30 points, close to it, as they scored three touchdowns in the uh, last 11 minutes of the ball game. They have dominated the entire season. Let, let's give these guys credit, very honestly, where credit's due. And take a look at last week's playoffs, Mike. Lakeside Lutheran, who was third in the uh, capital, and uh, Lodi, which was second, guess what? They both won. Now, Lake Mills has, was also in the playoffs. You can tell me, how did they fare last night? I really don't know. Help me out. Uh, which team were you asking about? All, all of those. Lodi, Lakeside Lutheran, and Lake Mills. Did, okay, uh, well, I, I, can, those teams win? I can tell you last night that Lodi beat Lake Mills 34-13. to Okay. Okay. Lakeside Lutheran fell to Waukesha Catholic Memorial 49-14. Oh. to uh, No shame in that because um, I tell you what, I think, uh, you know, if you look at the pairings with Columbus in the North Division this year and uh, Waukesha Catholic Memorial, of course, in the South, uh, these two are on a uh, collision course for uh, Camp Randall Stadium. I think uh, everybody and their mother uh, has said this right from the get-go. But, uh, hey, you got to play four in order to get to the camp, and uh, that's why we're here this afternoon, Mike. And I'm going to ask you, when was the last time you and I did an afternoon game? It has been a long time, Oh, my it? goodness. I mean, it's so much fun to look out there and actually be able to see the numbers. I mean, it's just got to be so much fun for these kids. These, these kids are going back to their youth days because – you played youth football in the daytime for the right. great majority mm -hmm. of them. And uh, once you get into high school, everything turns to uh, night football. And let's face it, uh, the difference between, uh, you know, a, a night game and a day game is like night and day. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, Columbus, of course, uh, coming into this game at 10-0 on the season, champs of the Capital Conference. They are the number one seed in this playoff bracket. And... Uh, a rather easy time of it, as we mentioned in their win last week over Altoona. Meanwhile, for Baldwin-Woodville, this pretty talented team as well. This Blackhawks team comes in with a 7-2 and overall record. They were victorious last week at Adams Friendship by the score of 48-36. to Now, Baldwin-Wood is a 5 seed, but I think that's a little misleading because if you listened closely to what I just said, they've played one fewer game than most of the teams. They've only played nine games. They had a game at the beginning of the season that was they were not able to play it uh, due to uh, lightning and, and the weather that night. And unfortunately, um, it was not counted as a forfeit. It just was not made up. So, um, so they ha that probably cost them a higher seed. Uh, I mean, tough to say, but... Uh, I, I firmly believe they're probably a two or a three seed, not a five seed, but it doesn't make them any less dangerous. They come out of the very, very tough middle border conference where they finished in a tie for second place with Rice Lake. Ellsworth won that conference, and that is a conference that historically has been very, very good. We've talked, you and I, Tim, about how good the Capital Conference is down in this part of the state. That middle border conference with Ellsworth, Baldwin-Woodville, Rice Lake, St. Croix Central, Somerset, the list goes on. They historically have been very competitive. They've sent a lot of teams over the years to state. As a matter of fact, 20 years ago, 2002, you and I called a state title game in Division Five when Somerset beat Marshall. So it, it, that's just one example of how quality the conference is. And, oh, by the way, Speaking of quality, Baldwin Woodville's quarterback, he's a quality uh, athlete. Mason Warner, let me tell you what he did last week against Adams Friendship. He accounted for all seven touchdowns that the Blackhawks scored. He was 18 of 21 with his arm for 317 yards and two passing touchdowns. He also ran for five touchdowns in the game. And you look at the uh, numbers on the season for Warner, he's thrown, if these, if these stats are accurate, He's thrown for 1,726 yards, 22 touchdowns, and only two interceptions. Guy's pretty good. They throw a lot, but they will also run. And one of their fine running backs that we're going to probably uh, talk a lot about is uh, Cal Smith. He's rushed for uh, a couple hundred yards this year. Logan Gordon's a name we may uh, call. And, of course, Mason Werner, talking about him, he's actually the leading rusher on this team, 601 yards. So they can run, but Werner does like to throw a lot. Well, Mike, you and I uh, had the opportunity this week for actually a, a pregame meeting, you know, to actually go over this uh, game uh, Thursday night. Uh, you and I attended a uh, local volleyball game together, and 
and uh, one, that's one of the things that we discussed was the fact that uh, this ball club is uh, very well-rounded. Uh, Columbus is going to have to be ready, needless to say. Uh, the coaches know the, all of this kind of fun stuff, but let's face it. Uh, the, the clubs, for the great majority, except for Lake Mills, okay, are pretty much run first in the uh, Capital Conference. Uh, so, you know, they're, they're accustomed to that. This is going to be a little bit different atmosphere for them here today. But, uh, boy, I'll tell you what, I, I like our chances. Uh, I think they're really, really good. Uh, I don't foresee, uh, you know, a 45 nothing game at the half. But uh, I wouldn't, wouldn't bother me one bit if we had it. So that's our matchup today. We've got Columbus. We've got Baldwin-Woodville. And we're glad you're with us here on Daily Dodge TV and 95.3 WBEV. Right now we're going to step aside, but we'll come back and we'll continue the John Deere pregame show. Up next, you'll hear some comments from Columbus head coach Andy Selgrad. Our colleague Wade Bates had a chance to visit with Coach Selgrad earlier this week, and we'll play the interview for you when we continue. You are listening to Columbus High School Playoff Football on Daily Dodge TV and 95.3 WBEV. John Deere not only builds great equipment, it's a great place to build your career and a high quality of life. You see, there's a certain kind of pride in being a part of a great American brand. It's the security that comes from learning new skills you'll have for a lifetime, a more confident future with unlimited growth opportunities, and the knowledge that you're valued and rewarded with a competitive benefits package. We're Deere Strong and Horicon Proud. Are you one of us? October means Ram Power Days at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam featuring scary low deals on brand new Ram trucks. Hello, this is Brent Reed, and with today's frightening interest rate, 1.9% for 60 months plus two grand off Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cabs will put those nightmares to rest. For you ghoulish sport utility buyers, take 2250 off Dodge Durango's or finance interest free for 48 months plus $750 off. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam and ReedChrysler.com. Welcome back to our live coverage of stunt magician Merlin Wormwood, brought to you by Surefire, your leading local installer of Lennox Home Comfort Systems. That's right, Matilda. Merlin Wormwood has locked himself in his mother's basement and is refusing to install a Lennox Home Comfort System from Surefire until she promises to start making him pizza bagels every Friday evening. Chuck, I'm sorry. How is this stunt magic? Isn't this just a lame protest? Mm, have you tried his mom's pizza bagels? They're incredible. When we come back, what's the secret behind Merlin's mother's pizza bagels? And the latest weather report with Surefire, up next. With a finance plan to fit every budget, today is the time to upgrade to new Lennox Home Comfort System from Surefire, your local Lennox premier dealer. Online at surefireinc.com. Be sure with American drivers overpay an average of $368 per year on their auto insurance. Why? Because, well, insurance is hard. It's complicated. It's time-consuming to get quotes from multiple companies, so we overpay. Or we call Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Make one call and receive a quote from a great company like Auto Owners Insurance. The team at Richards Insurance will literally do all the work for you. So if you could be saving money each month with an Auto Owners Insurance policy, you'll know about it. How much will you save with Richards Insurance? To find out, call Richards Insurance or stop in at 123 North Spring Street, downtown Beaver Dam. With offices in Columbus, Watertown, West Bend, and Oshkosh. With over 50 employees and hundreds of years insurance experience across five offices, you'll get full service counseling with no obligation. Your auto owner's insurance carrier is Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Call 887-1615. We'll be there with you. Richards Insurance of Beaver Dam. Columbus High School football coach Andy Selgrad joins us now as his squad gets ready for a Saturday Division IV Level Two matchup with Baldwin-Woodville, a game you're hearing on 95.3 WBEV and watching on Daily Dodge TV. Uh, coach, before we talk about Baldwin-Woodville, uh, your Level One opponent, Altoona, came to town. Are you happy with how your team just took care of business? I am. Uh, you know, we... We went in that game. We we had some things that we needed to work on, and you know, 
the outcome was as about as good as you can expect. So it's just a very business-like, you know, workman-like type of game for us. And so I was very happy with that. What types of goals do you set in, in games? Do you set, besides, obviously, when you get to the playoffs, you want to win football games. But if you're going into a football game knowing that, hey, your team's pretty good and you may have, uh, you have some success, do you set other types of goals to accomplish as well? We do. Um, I'd like to keep those uh-huh. <laughs> with the team. But, yeah, we do definitely every week. Coach, uh, so you get the victory last week. And how long do you get to enjoy it before you start thinking about your next opponent? About 10 minutes. 10 minutes. <laughs> is that the same in the regular season as well, or just because it's the postseason you want to get as much time in as you can? It's, it's every week, no matter what. Uh, I'm a film junkie, so as soon as we're done and in, in, in heading home, I, I first thing I do is go on huddle. See who's, see who's put their film up, and I start watching it right away. So I kind of learned that from some of my previous head coaches that I worked under, uh, Coach Knavak, uh, Coach Jorgensen, you know, both of them. And it's just it's just our nature. Coach, uh, so you got Baldwin Woodville coming to town. First of all, I guess I didn't ask you about this last week. Just your thoughts on uh, on kind of moving uh, north uh, the way that the WIAA potted you and uh, seeing some teams that maybe you're very not familiar with. Familiar with. You know, it's it's kind of uh, it's it's exciting. It is because going through the Capital Conference is a gauntlet. You know, the, the conference schedule week to week is tough, and there's so many quality teams, there's so many quality opponents, quality football coaches. Uh, it's a grind, and so to not have to go through that gauntlet again, uh, I'm not going to lie, I wasn't disappointed by that. So it was, uh, it's nice to see some different teams of different types of football out there and uh, get to see some new faces. Coach, game got moved to Saturday, Baldwin, Woodville, darn near in Minnesota. And mm-hmm. uh, just uh, so with, with that extra day to prepare, I know we were talking, you're your coach. So many football coaches are routine type coaches. You want to go A to B to C and keep things the same every week. But now you yeah. got you got that extra day delivered to you with the, the 1 o'clock start on Saturday. Uh, what do you do with that extra day and just how does that change how you prepare? Well, first thing, you know, it gives us an extra day to kind of rest up. You know, when you're getting to week 10, week 11, and so on, you know, you start getting some bumps and bruises and, you know, you get a little bit tired. So right away, just having a little bit extra time to rest and prepare is always a good thing. Uh, you know, for, for me, from a coaching perspective, I, I am a routine guy. So hopefully moving it to a Saturday at 1 isn't going to be too much of a disruption. You know, bottom line, we got to play the game regardless of when it is. So in my opinion, playing at home is more important than when we play. Coach Baldwin Woodville out of the Middle Border Conferences. What can you tell you about that league, and what can you tell us about Baldwin Woodville? Well, that's a that's a quality conference. It really is. You know, top to bottom, it, I'd say it's similar to what we have here in the Capital Conference. You know, you've got Ellsworth, you've got uh, Rice Lake. You know, Baldwin Woodville. Those are all really good football teams. So I know they've been battle tested, and they, they've got a quality team, and we're going to have to play really good football to to be able to compete on Saturday. When you watch film, what challenges do they they bring to the table? What, what are they good at? You know, they're a very balanced team. Really, um, they pass a little bit more than they run the ball, but as a whole, if you look at their stats and their yardage, it's darn near fifty fifty between run pass. So they can attack you in a lot of different ways. They've got good team speed. They're they're really tall. They got some really tall guys, you know. I'm a short guy already, so it, it makes me feel even worse about myself. But you know, they, they they've got a lot of weapons on both sides of the ball and uh they're really aggressive and it's gonna be a challenge. So what are some of the keys to the game if you want to move on to the quarterfinals? We just got to do our job. We got to play our game. We got to dictate how the game's going to go. We got to control the line of scrimmage, and that's the same week in and week out. So if we control the line of scrimmage both offensively and defensively, we'll be in good shape. Um, I, I think we match up pretty well against them. The good thing is the type of offense they run is something we've seen numerous times in the Capital Conference, so it's not going to be something foreign. So... I think we just got to keep our heads, keep our composure, and control the line. Coach Andy Selgrad, I appreciate the time, and good luck on Saturday. All right, thanks, Wade. Columbus Football on 95.3 WBEV and Daily Dodge TV. 
Cardinal Lanes, and Columbus is proud to support the Columbus Cardinal football team. Cardinal Lanes is now open and the place to go when you want to have a great time with friends and family. Check out their 12 lanes of bowling and a large event space. They also feature a great menu and weekly specials like Friday Fish Fry. Follow Cardinal Lanes on Facebook and check them out online at cardinallanescolumbus.com. Cardinal Lanes, open seven days a week, 1030 a.m. to midnight. Go Cardinals and let the good times roll. As the Columbus Cardinals wrap up their playoff season, golf season is winding down. But the fun continues at Columbus Country Club. Check out their new menu with great sandwiches, jumbo wings, and handmade pizzas. And enjoy their Friday fish fry year-round. Get ready for prime rib every other Saturday starting in January. This winter, join Columbus Country Club for Euchre tournaments and Sunday brunch. Follow on Facebook and stop in Highway 73 right in the middle of Columbus behind Fireman's Pavilion. Columbus Country Club, a proud supporter of the Columbus Cardinals. Ready, set, Ergo. The game plan is to make banking convenient for you. Ergo Bank has locations in Marquezan and Fox Lake with interactive teller machines in five different communities. And at all locations, speak with a live teller and conduct most in-branch transactions by transferring, withdrawing, or depositing. That's better banking by design. Open 7A to 7P Monday through Friday, 7 to noon on Saturdays. Call them today at 920-398-2336 or visit ErgoBank.com. Ergo Bank, an equal housing lender and member FDIC. Your Dare to Dream team at EXP Realty cheers on the Columbus Cardinals in the playoffs. Linda and her dream team, daughter Ember and son Eric at EXP Realty, have been proudly serving your real estate needs for over 25 years in our community. They'll help you navigate through all of your real estate needs, making your dreams come true. Visit them online at daretodreamproperties.com. Your Dare to Dream team, proud supporters of the Columbus Cardinals. If you ask a community member what comes to mind when they think Farmers and Merchants Union Bank, chances are they'll say our commitment to our community. And that's why we're proud to cheer on our Columbus Cardinal football team. Farmers and Merchants Union Bank has been proud to offer the latest in banking technology and great customer service for generations. Check us out today at fmub.bank or step into one of our six convenient locations. And go Cardinals! Farmers and Merchants Union Bank, member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Kestrel Ridge Golf Course is cheering for the Columbus Cardinals on their journey through the postseason. Take advantage of fall rates and great course conditions by reserving your tee time online at KestrelRidgeGolf.com. Stop in for their fantastic Friday fish fry and dining specials. Kestrel Ridge also offers a beautiful event setting for your upcoming holiday party, wedding, or private event. Call to book your event today and check out KestrelRidgeGolf.com for more specials and information. You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show presented by John Deere. Tim Haldeman with you. And our pregame show brought to you by John Deere Horicon Works. Let's give you some starting lineups. First, the offensive starters for Baldwin Woodville, coached by Dan Kiefer. The quarterback is Mason Werner, a six foot one inch, 175 pound senior. At running back, Cal Smith, 6'1, 185, and a junior. Wide receivers include Colin Fritz, a six foot three inch, 185 pound junior. Gavin Sell, a 6'1 sophomore at 175, and Sean Van Someren, a 6'5 inch, 180 pound senior. Tight end is Eli Coonan, 6'6, 215, and a senior. Looking at the offensive line, the tackles are Lucas Deshane, a 6'2, 220 pound junior, and Tyler Herr, 6'8, 310, and a senior. The guards are Elijah Heimer, 5'10 inch, 225 pound senior and Ben Peavy, a 5'11", 237-pound junior. The center is Noah Sauerauer, a 6'1", 260-pound junior. Now the defensive starters for Columbus. Along the line, the nose tackle is Colin Selk, 6'5", 290-pound senior. Defensive ends are Jamison Sullivan, a 6'5", 255-pound senior, and Brady Engel, 6'3", 240, and a senior. Linebackers on the outside, Jefferson Mowbray, a 6'3 inch junior at 185, along with Axel Elaine, a sophomore at 6'2, 180. Middle linebackers are Milani Aragon, a senior at 5'11, 200, and also Colton Brunel, 6'205 pound junior. The cornerbacks are Brady Link, a 5'9 inch, 190 pound junior, along with Braxton Knockreiner, 6 feet tall, 185, and a senior. And rounding out the uh, starters defensively for Columbus, 
The safety is Riley Knockreiner, six foot, 185 pound junior Cardinals, of course, of course, coached by Andy Selgrad. We'll step aside for the national anthem, back for the opening kick after this on 95.3 WBEV and Daily Dodge TV. Lamers Bus Lines, our community needs you. What drives you? Drive for Lamers. I wanted to do something good for my community, and now I get to make a difference in kids' lives. Call or visit us at golamers.com for more information. There's only so much fishing a retired guy can do. What drives you? Drive for Lamers. Our kids need us. I felt like I needed to do something good for my community. Call or visit golamers.com for more information. And I'm getting paid for it. Lamers Bus Lines. Our community needs you. At Prairie Ridge Health, we believe that orthopedics is more than surgery. It's about getting your life back. Our collaborative team of expert surgeons, therapists, and nurses work together to get you back to feeling pain-free in your daily life. Our innovative and proven program is designed to get you from hospital to home with confidence. Find out how the Prairie Ridge Health orthopedic team can help you at prairieridge.health. Prairie Ridge Health accepts over 70 major insurances, including Dean. October means Ram Power Days at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam featuring scary low deals on brand new Ram trucks. Hello, this is Brent Reed, and with today's frightening interest rate, 1.9% for 60 months plus two grand off Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cabs will put those nightmares to rest. For you ghoulish sport utility buyers, take 2250 off Dodge Durango's or finance interest-free for 48 months plus $750 off. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam and ReedChrysler.com. We want to get you into your comfort zone. Chad Guzzi here of Air Care and Beaver Dam. We are your heating and cooling experts with more than 40 years of experience. Our trained professionals install forced air systems, zoning, boilers, in-floor heating, geothermal units, mini splits, and more to keep you in the zone. We want you to be completely comfortable with an efficient, quiet system that is designed specifically for you, your home, and your budget. Find your comfort zone with Air Care, aircareinc.com. You're watching the Daily Dodge pregame show yeah, presented by John Deere. As we are just about set for the kickoff of this level two playoff game in Division Four, it's Columbus hosting Baldwin Woodville. And for those of you on the radio side of things today, Columbus is wearing red jerseys and pants with white numbers, white helmets. Meanwhile, Baldwin Woodville today, they have got white jerseys with black pants. They have black numbers with some red outline around them and some gray helmets with some red and white trim on the helmets. We'll be underway here momentarily. Once again, our pregame show brought to you by John Deere Horicon Works, and we thank them for their continued support of high school athletics here on Daily Dodge TV and 95.3 WBEV. Well, the WIAA State Football Finals are scheduled for November 17th and 18th at Camp Randall Stadium in Madison. All tickets are sold online, so there are no long lines to purchase them. Order your state finals tickets online in advance by clicking on the tickets link located at the top of the WIAA homepage and navigating to the state football finals option. The website, of course, WIAAWI.org. Hey, send us an email during the broadcast today. We love to hear from you. And our email is sports at dailydodge.com. Sports at dailydodge.com. We'll take your name, where you're from, who you're cheering for, and we'll be happy to give you a shout-out during the game today. We, we love hearing from uh, a lot of our viewers and listeners each and every week. And uh, we know we're going to hear from a lot of Columbus uh, fans today, but uh, if you're a Baldwin-Woodville fan... Don't be afraid. Send us an email. Let us know where you're tuning in from today, and we uh, welcome you as uh, as viewers and listeners to this game. Glad you're with us today. And it's a beautiful, beautiful Saturday afternoon here in Columbus for this one. Of course, this game got moved to today because uh, of the long drive for Baldwin-Woodville to get here. In fact, I talked to uh, Coach Dan Keeper on the field a few few minutes ago, and they left at 6.30 this morning. I said, whoa, you left early. He says, well, we stopped and we had a team uh, breakfast. So they, uh, they dined on the way and they had a nice breakfast and took their time getting here. And, hey, they're excited to be playing. We're excited to be here as well. Amen, brother. And, Mike, I couldn't help but uh, just uh, take a quick uh, synopsis of 
when we first came on the air and, and you listed yourself and myself and, and Ninja and everybody and, and, and Kaya back, Kyra Kara, back at yep. the studio, and I'm going like, what a cast of characters. Absolutely. And, boy, I'm telling you, we're all having fun. That's <laughs> the name. Oh, we forgot Schweitz over here doing the, uh, the clock. And, of course, Jared Fox doing the PA today. Unlike uh, none other, of course, Marlon Hensler not here today. He's at the state cross-country meet. So here we go, Mike. Take it away, partner. All right, Corbin Hines is going to kick it away for Columbus. And back deep to receive, Cal Smith is back at his own six-yard line for Baldwin-Woodville. So is Ryan Venendahl. In this first quarter of play, Baldwin Woodville goes right to left as Tim and I see it. Here's the approach. Kicks in the air. End over end. And Venendahl has it at the nine. He stumbles, fumbles the ball, picks it back up to the 15. And Ooh, he's, he down he's, he's down there. He's down there. Yeah, they're saying he's down at the nine Ooh, yard line. And that is a uh, that's a break for Columbus. Tough break for Baldwin Woodville, but the Blackhawks will set up shop first and ten from their own nine yard line, and that's how this game gets underway here today. It's a McKinstry's Home Furnishings first down for Baldwin-Woodville. Second place tie for the Blackhawks. They tied with Rice Lake for second in the middle border conference this year. Five and two conference records. Baldwin-Woodville was seven and two overall. They're seven and two coming into this game. Columbus, of course, champs of the Capital Conference, a perfect 10 and 0. All right, Mason Warner, the quarterback, out of the gun on first and 10, low snap, hands it off. And this is Smith straight ahead, and he gets stood up right around the 10-yard line. Brady Link led the charge defensively there, and that is only going to be a gain of a couple. They'll give him about two to the 11, and it'll be second and roughly eight to go, maybe a little less than that. That's called finishing a tackle Yeah, right there. Go right through the guy. After a gain of close to three, on second down, back to throw is Warner throws. It is... Great catch. Caught. Yes, a diving catch by Cal Smith at the 21-yard line to give the Blackhawks a McKinstry's home furnishings first down. He had to go down to get that one, and great catch by Smith. And it's a gain of about nine ten. yards. I gave Close him to 10. All right, we'll give him 10. First and 10 for the Blackhawks. Low snap again. Werner's going to throw. It Ooh. is incomplete. And the intended target over on the right side of the field was Colton Hush. Five foot seven inch, 138 pound junior. But it that, fails to connect, second that, and 10 coming up. That was a bubble screen to the right and uh, very honestly, uh, it was a little too hot to handle as uh, Werner threw a fastball to his intended receiver. But if it were to, to have been completed, I don't think he would have got much. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Smith is the lone setback. And Werner again out of the shotgun on this second and 10 play from his own 21-yard line. Takes the snap. Good protection. He's going to launch it. Right side. Got a man. It's incomplete. And the intended target was Gavin Sell, one of the wide receivers. Braxton Knockreiner was out there in coverage. The ball just a tad overthrown, but... Fortunate for Columbus because Knockreiner got beat by a step or two. Well, he was pretty much, yeah, half a step. Uh, but uh, I'll tell you what, uh, Knockreiner was right with them. Uh, I think if Werner had it to do all over again, he would have put a little more air under that ball and just allowed his receiver to adjust to it. All right, on third down and 10. Another low snap, and they hand Draw. it off. Smith straight ahead. Breaks oh. a tackle. He's to the 25. He's to the 30. He's to the 35, breaks another tackle with a stiff arm, and Knockreiner finally brings him down around the 41-yard line, but that's a gain of 20 yards and a fresh set of downs for the Blackhawks. It'll be first and 10 for Baldwin-Woodville just across their own 40-yard line, moving right to left. We're not even a minute and a half into this ball game. No score as of yet on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Something we haven't seen very often, and that was a missed tackle in wide yes. open spaces. First and 10, low snap again, handoff Smith, and he's going nowhere. And he got pushed back. He lost a yard. Yeah, he lost a yard, I believe. Uh, Ty Cowell was there defensively, so was Colin Selk. There were numerous red jerseys there. Loss of one, second and 11 coming up. One thing I have noticed, though, with uh, several of the snaps already, they've been low. They've been very low, and, and uh, Warner's done a nice job digging them out. All right, second and 11. Another low snap. Warner pump fake back to throw. 
He's going to run to the right side, throws off oh, his back foot. He's got open. a man wide open on the side of the field, and it's caught. That is, that is Colin Fritz that makes the reception, and he gets into Columbus territory down near the 40-yard line, and that would be a gain of 19 yards. And another first and 10, another McKinstry's home furnishings first down and 10 for the Blackhawks. And Columbus had a really hard time getting that dude down. They did. I mean, it took five guys to get that guy down over there. Ball is right at the Cardinal 40-yard line. Blackhawks have a first and 10 from the Columbus 40. Again, a couple receivers to the left, one to the right. Out of the gun, Warner. They motion a man. That's Hush. Fake the handoff. Warner on the keeper, and he will get smothered and lose yardage. Well, leading the charge was Colin Selk. He had some help from his friends, but it's a loss on the play of almost two yards. We'll call it second and a short 12 for the Blackhawks at the Columbus 42-yard line. 9.25 and counting left in a scoreless first quarter on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Thus far, it seems as though Columbus's defense trying to take away Werner on the keeper. Yep. Snap. Handoff. And that's not going anywhere. That was Logan Gordon. Logan minus, Gordon. Minus three. Who loses about three yards on the play that time. Columbus was ready for it. Tackle for a loss. So we're going to call it second and 13 for the Blackhawks. They've got the ball at the 19-yard line of Columbus. One thing to keep in mind, we watched the uh, kicker in the pregame. He looked pretty good. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Smith alone set back, but a pump fake by Werner. Now he throws. Caught! And that's Fritz inside the 10, still on his feet, finally pushed out of bounds on the near sideline. Aaron Eckern finished him off. But Werner's pass is another completion, this one to Fritz. They're going to mark it at the 8. That's a gain of 11. It's a McKinstry's home furnishings first down. Or no, beg your pardon. He's, he's, he's about a yard shy. It's going to bring up a third down and about to what, one to go? 67 yards passing already in this drive. So make it second and a long one or a short two. Werner hands it off. Smith breaking a tackle to the five. He's got a first down still on his feet. And he's finally tackled inside the five at about maybe the three-yard line. But it's first and goal coming up for Baldwin-Woodville. What an impressive opening drive for the Blackhawks here on the road It'll be first and goal for Baldwin-Woodville. At the two. The two-yard line is where they spot it. And here we go on first and goal for the Blackhawks from the two. Werner has the snap. He's going to run with Whoa, it. Baby. Keeper to the left side. And he will get tackled right near the line of scrimmage. He just couldn't turn the corner. Selk was there. Eckern was there. Cowell was there. Milani Aragon was there. I don't know that he got anything on that play. Well, he got nothing, but he uh, could have lost four or five yards. He did a great job. You can see the difference between this club and the club from last week. These guys are really hard to bring down. Second down and goal from the two-yard line. Sweep. And handed off as a sweep, yep. And a nice cut, but tackled just shy of the goal line was Colton Hush. Hush on the end around. And Hush... Very close, but tackled around the one-yard line. Ooh, what do we got? Third and goal. Okay. It's going to be one. third down and goal. From the one. From the one. 6-14 and counting left in the first quarter on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Here we go. Third and goal for the Blackhawks, and we've timeout. got a timeout. This timeout brought to you by Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Let our family take care of your family, and it's a timeout. We'll keep it right here. And we did get our first email of the day. Oh, my goodness. This is from Joe Zander. It says, tell Jared to keep up the good work. Uh, he says, no rhyming, Fox. <laughs> he says, uh, he says Fox once palmed a medicine ball. Is that true? <laughs> Jared Fox filling in for Marlon Hensler on the PA here today. Joe, you're crazy. <laughs> Again, we'd like to hear from you, folks. Send us an email, sports at dailydodge.com, sports at dailydodge.com. We'll take your name, where you're from, who you're cheering for. We know you're out there. We had uh, 
quite a nice audience last week when Columbus played Altoona, and I'm sure there's a lot of folks tuned in today, especially those of you up in the uh, west central part of the state that maybe weren't able to make the uh, long drive down here from the Baldwin-Woodville area. An area that I'm very familiar with, by the way. I grew up in uh, the Twin Cities and went to college at UW-Eau Claire, so I've driven through Baldwin and Woodville many, many times over the years. All right, third and goal for the Blackhawks from the one-yard line. Werner out of the gun. They motion a man. Werner going to throw. It is knocked down! <laughs> Batted down. I believe that was Sullivan that knocked it down. And it's fourth and goal. Now what do you do? I mean, you've got a good kicker, but you're on the one-yard line. I, I mean, I wouldn't fault Mike, him for going for it here. Mike, I was going to say prior to this that, that uh, the Blackhawks have found it difficult to run inside in this entire drive. That's not been their expertise in this drive. Now they've only got one yard, yard to work with. And, uh, well, that right there, there Here was we go. a bunch of paws up there to knock that one down. Fourth and goal for the Blackhawks from the one. Werner gives Sweet. it up to the left side. Diving Ooh. for the pylon. Oh. Touchdown, Baldwin Woodville. Oh, my gosh, that was so close. Colton Hush with a one-yard dive to the pylon. And with 5.53 to go first quarter, it's 6-0 Blackhawks. I'm going to tell you something, folks. I'd like to see that one in replay. Ninja, you got it? Yeah? It just played? Okay, I'll tell you what. I'd like to have a whole lot better angle than what we've got because in pros and college, they're going to go to replay on that one. It was so close. Davis Paulson attempts the extra point. Kick is up. Kick is good. 7-0. Baldwin Woodville leads Columbus on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Back in one minute, Daily Dodge TV and 95.3 WBEV. At the Bayside Supper Club on Thursdays from 5 to 8.30, you can have the famous chicken wing and rib combo for $12.99, 10-ounce prime rib for $16.99, or all-you-can-eat deep-fried fantail shrimp for $14.99. Friday is the all-you-can-eat chicken and fish seafood buffet from 4.30 to 9, and Saturday is the prime rib shrimp seafood buffet from 5 to 8.30. Sunday brunch is back every Sunday from 10.30 to 1.30. Book your wedding, anniversary, or birthday celebration now for 2022. Cardinal Lanes in Columbus is proud to support the Columbus Cardinal football team. Cardinal Lanes is now open and the place to go when you want to have a great time with friends and family. Check out their 12 lanes of bowling and a large event space. They also feature a great menu and weekly specials like Friday Fish Fry. Follow Cardinal Lanes on Facebook and check them out online at cardinallanescolumbus.com. Cardinal Lanes, open seven days a week, 1030 a.m. to midnight. Go Cardinals and let the good times roll. Well, on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard, it's now 7-0, Baldwin-Woodville leading Columbus. And Tim Haldeman, that was an impressive opening drive by the Blackhawks. Did I hear right? 17 plays on that opening drive. 17 plays. It took them six minutes and seven seconds. So, yeah. And they went, what, 91 yards? Oh, they went 91 yards. 91 yes, yards, folks. Yep. All right. Paulson's going to kick it off. Here we go. Onside kick. Onside kick. Oh, it was touched early. And let's see. Baldwin Woodville says they have it. No signal yet from the officials. We're waiting. They're still discussing it. We're waiting for an official signal. The Blackhawks think they have recovered. And they're saying it's Baldwin Woodville football. Oh, I thought they touched it before it went 10 Well, yards. apparently the, the referees felt otherwise. I, I don't think he could see it. And they're, I mean, that, that caught everybody in the building by surprise. They're still discussing. They're yeah, they're still discussing. They're, yeah, they're still talking they're about They're talking it. exactly what we're talking about because the one referee is indicating on the other side of the 50-yard line. They're talking about it, and I, I'll tell you what. I, uh, it was a difficult uh, look for the referee because he's looking right down that 50, as we are, Mike. Okay, but yep. we – They've they, okay, they they just signaled again. It. Yep. They stuck with it. I'll tell you what. There's another call. And I, I understand the replay is not going to come back to – it's never going to come into high school football. I understand that just because of the cost involved. But that one would have gone to replay as well, okay, and I think that one would have come back, my own personal belief. That was touched before it went 10 yards. So it's first and 10 for 
Baldwin Woodville at the Columbus 49 after they recover the onside kick. They motion a man. Warner back to throw. Pressure coming. He's being flushed out of the pocket. Coming to the near side. Penalty Warner. flag. Penalty He's flag in the back. play, and he will run out of bounds near the Columbus 45, but there is a penalty marker on the field. And it's a holding call on the Blackhawks. Mike Tronson, Tim Haldeman with you on Daily Dodge TV at 95.3 WBEV. We've got Kyra engineering our radio broadcast today back at the 95.3 studios. Justin Wilski, a.k.a. Ninja, and Alex are our videographers and on-site engineers for this broadcast today on Daily Dodge TV. Thanks for being with us. And with 541 left in the first quarter, on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard, it's 7-0 in favor of Baldwin-Woodville. They just recovered an onside kick, but a holding penalty has pushed them back. First and 22 from their own 39-yard line. And Warner, low snap, pump fake, pressure comes, and he's hit. Intercepted. And intercepted. Oh. It's intercepted by Jamison Sullivan. He hit Warner as he was throwing. The ball went straight up in the air, and Sullivan stayed with it to pick it off. Oh. And Columbus has the ball for the... Jamison Sullivan all on his own, got right in the face of Werner, knocked it straight up in the air. Well, I shouldn't say that. He had to actually move his feet a little bit in order to go get it. Looked like a, uh, a real fleet receiver to get underneath that one. It is first and 10 for Columbus at the Baldwin-Woodville 32-yard line. Cardinals going left to right as we see it. Nathan Cotter out of the gun. <clears throat> Link in motion, another low snap. Hand off Brunel. Left side breaks a tackle, stiff arms a man, still on his feet, dives inside the 30, and he's out of bounds on the far side of the field. He made a yard out of a negative three. <laughs> yeah, he had, yeah, to, uh, okay, we're he had to do two. a lot of work for a short two yard gain there, but second and eight coming up with the ball now on the 30 yard line. 5.27 to go in the first period. Seven nothing Blackhawks on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Link split wide to the right. Brunel standing behind Cotter out of the gun. And Brunel takes hand up straight ahead. 15. See ya. Goodbye. to the 10. 5. Touchdown Columbus. Colton Brunel with a 30 yard touchdown run. And just like that, it's a one-point game, 7-6, to six, Baldwin Woodville. Mike, you and I had chatted about this the other night, and that was the fact that uh, this defense for the Blackhawks gave up an awful lot of points to Adams' friendship last week. And when I saw that, I thought to myself, Colton Brunel could have a real heyday. Hines to attempt the extra point. The kick is up. Plenty of leg. It is good. We're tied at 7, 5.19 to go first quarter. We're back in one minute on Daily Dodge TV and 95.3 WBEV. As the Columbus Cardinals rev up their playoff season. Golf season is winding down. But the fun continues at Columbus Country Club. Check out their new menu with great sandwiches, jumbo wings, and handmade pizzas. And enjoy their Friday fish fry year-round. Get ready for prime rib every other Saturday starting in January. This winter, join Columbus Country Club for Euchre tournaments and Sunday brunch. Follow on Facebook and stop in Highway 73 right in the middle of Columbus behind Fireman's Pavilion. Columbus Country Club, a proud supporter of the Columbus Cardinals. My dentist cares about me. Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster. At Columbus Family Dental, we care about you and kids or cosmetic work for yourself. We're here waiting for you. Call us today at 623-5559 to set up your no-pressure free consultation to see if we're the right fit for you. Tie ball game as we come back to Columbus Fireman's Park. Here's the short end-over-end -end kick. Fielded at the 31-yard line to the, Ooh. oh, and getting hit really hard Ouch. at about the 37-yard line was Jackson Johansson. He was one of the up men that fielded that Ooh. for Baldwin-Woodville. Tyler Ott with the and hit. Tyler Ott Ouch. just leveled him. Ooh. And it's going to be a first and 10 for Baldwin-Woodville and McKinstry's Home Furnishings. First and 10 from their own 37-yard line. Again, moving right to left in the first quarter. 7-7 on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. And, uh, Tim, you just mentioned it as we came out of the break. Time of possession, very misleading stat, isn't it? Especially <laughs> in this game. All right, first and 10 for the Blackhawks. Two receivers to each side. 
Now they motion a man. That's Hush. Low snap. Penalty flag. And a flag in. It's gonna cost him five. Yep, five yard penalty on the Blackhawks. Once again, the snap was low, Mike. They, they've been it's, low almost it's all gonna day. Gonna cost them. It, it's gonna. Yep. By the way, we got some emails starting to come in here. I'm going to get to those in just a second, but uh, you can send us an email, sports at dailydodge.com. Uh, this one says, Go Blackhawks from Gene G. Gene, thank you very much for your email today. Gene G, cheering for Baldwin Woodville on the broadcast today. This email says, Take the W Baldwin. This from Carson. Carson with an email sending our way today. Sports at dailydodge.com. Send me your name, where you're from. Who you're cheering for, and I'll get you on the air today. All right. Ooh, that's oh, final. we've got movement on Selk yep. and Columbus. Five back. So, yep, the team's just traded five-yard penalties. Uh, well, we have that walk off. Another email here. This one says, cheering for the Cardinals from the Combine while harvesting corn. Go Cards. That's from Danny Brisky. Oh. Check it in today. Hi, Dan. How you doing, buddy? Thanks right, for the I'll, email, Dan. I'll bet you it's averaging 200 an acre. We'll get to some more emails in a moment. All right, it's first and 10 now again for the Blackhawks from their own 37. Another low snap, handoff, and boy, getting stood up was Logan Gordon. Logan Gordon went straight up the middle, got about maybe a yard, Tim? Yeah, we'll give him a one. That's a generous, generous. A generous uh, one, and it's going to be second and nine for Baldwin Woodville. They're in a hurry up. They don't go into the huddle. Yeah, they, they get, don't. They uh, get directions from the sideline. And you can only do that if you've got an experienced quarterback. This kid's pretty good. All right? Yes, he's very if, good. If you give this kid time, he's going to be really tough to handle today. I'm telling you right now, the key is the defensive line. If they can, uh, there's a bubble screen. And Whoa. it's caught by Sell. He breaks a tackle. He's to the 40. And down finally around the 45-yard line, still shy of the first down marker. But, boy, all of these guys on Baldwin Rule, they're tough to bring down, as we're seeing here. And they mark this right at the 45-yard line. So it was seven. a gain of seven yards, and it's going to set up a third down and two for the Blackhawks. And we've got another email to get to. This one says, two uncles and cousin Leah enjoying watching, watching Mason and the Blackhawk team today. So they're cheering for Baldwin Woodville. Thank you very much for that email. Sports at DailyDodge.com is where you can send us Ooh. your message today. Almost Let me know who you're offside. cheering for. Columbus almost went off. Give me your name and where you're from. End. Oh, and timeout. Timeout has been called. Timeout brought to you by Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Let our family take care of your family. We're back in one minute. Daily Dodge TV, 95.3 WBEV. October means Ram Power Days at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam featuring scary low deals on brand new Ram trucks. Hello, this is Brent Reed, and with today's frightening interest rate, 1.9% for 60 months plus two grand off Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cabs will put those nightmares to rest. For you ghoulish sport utility buyers, take $2,250 off Dodge Durango's or finance interest-free for 48 months plus $750 off. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam and ReedChrysler.com. Ready, set, ergo. The game plan is to make banking convenient for you. Ergo Bank has locations in Marquezan and Fox Lake with interactive teller machines in five different communities. And at all locations, speak with a live teller and conduct most in-branch transactions by transferring, withdrawing, or depositing. That's better banking by design. Open 7A to 7P Monday through Friday, 7 to noon on Saturdays. Call them today at 920-398-2336 or visit ergobank.com. Ergo Bank, an equal housing lender and member FDIC. All right, after the timeout, we come back to live action. It's third down and two for Baldwin Woodville from their own 45. Ball's on the right hash. Snap back to Warner, and that play is blown dead. It's going to be a false start. So that's going to turn a third and two into a third and seven for the Blackhawks as they will be walking that, back another five yards. That's really huge. This that's is a very big, huge. big play. There's going to be a lot of big plays in this game, Mike, but uh, nothing as big as the uh, – post-game uh, refreshment that I'm going to have down at Kester Ridge. Hey, Mary, get ready. Mary Dodds, the hostess with the mostest. And she said post-game beverages on her today. I actually checked that with Randy. I did. Yep. No doubt about it. I always it. said it's not what you know, it's who you know. Anyways, it's third and seven for the Blackhawks from their own 40. Three receivers left. 
Low snap. Werner pump fake. Now going to throw near side. It is intercepted. And he could go. Knock Ryder down the right sideline. 30 to the 20 to the 10. Oh. And finally tripped up at the five yard line. Riley Knockreiner picks off the pass, takes it down the sideline, all the way to the five yard line. And it's first and goal for Columbus. That's just great uh, basketball, oh, pardon me, <laughs> basketball, football savvy. Experience, okay? Experience. How many uh, square out and goes have they thrown so far today? Numerous. They have a real quick, uh, you know, fake to the outside, and then they go. And that time, Knockreiner just smelling it. And uh, there were, oh, there we got a penalty, illegal substitution on Columbus. Yeah, they just threw the flag before yeah. they, they could get the playoff. So a five-yard penalty on Columbus. Ouch. Don't want to see that happen, but. That'll back him up another five yards, so it's going to be a first and goal from the 10. They keep a uh, close watch on uh, Milani Aragon. He just came over to the sideline uh, holding his arm uh, a little gingerly. Just keep a watchful eye on that one to see if he uh, is able to continue. All right. For right now, as it stands, it's 7-7 on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard, but a first and goal for Columbus from the 10. And the give to Brunel. Right side he goes, inside the 10, inside the 5. Ooh. Dives to the goal line, and yep. he is he's in. Touchdown, Columbus. Colton Brunel with a 10-yard house call. And it's 13-7 in favor of the Cardinals. Oh, I like that, Mike. House calls. I like that. You just keep amazing me. So, I try. So Columbus with, uh, oh, my goodness, three plays from scrimmage. Three. 42 yards and they've in scored total. on <laughs> 42 yards in total on three carries Cra for crazy Colton isn't it? Brunel and they are up 13 whoops that Hines one's no extra good. point is blocked yeah so the extra point no good but it's 13 7 Columbus we're back in one minute daily Dodge TV and 95 3 WBEV your Dare to Dream team at EXP Realty cheers on the Columbus Cardinals in the playoffs. Linda and her dream team, daughter Ember and son Eric at EXP Realty, have been proudly serving your real estate needs for over 25 years in our community. They'll help you navigate through all of your real estate needs, making your dreams come true. Visit them online at daretodreamproperties.com. Your Dare to Dream team, proud supporters of the Columbus Cardinals. If you ask a community member what comes to mind when they think Farmers and Merchants Union Bank, chances are they'll say our commitment to our community. And that's why we're proud to cheer on our Columbus Cardinal football team. Farmers and Merchants Union Bank has been proud to offer the latest in banking technology and great customer service for generations. Check us out today at fmub.bank or step into one of our six convenient locations. And go Cardinals! Farmers and Merchants Union Bank, member FDIC and equal housing lender. Well, Columbus has the lead on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Cardinals 13, Blackhawks 7. Hines to kick it away for Columbus. Short end over end kick. And this will be taken by Logan Gordon at his own 23 to the 25. He Ooh. stumbles around the 30-yard line. Logan Gordon on the return for the Blackhawks. And it's a McKinstry's Home Furnishings first down and 10 coming up for the Blackhawks. Boy, emails coming in a plenty now. This one says... Roll Dirty Birds. Good luck, Seabus. That's from the Davisons checking in today on the broadcast. This one says, rooting for Columbus. Go cards from our good friend Overnight. Overnight Bonnie with an email checking in today. Well, hey, I've, uh, known, I've known Overnight Bonnie for a lot of years. Hey, on the streaming side. More got, years than she's cared to know me. We've so. got folks from Germany and the Dominican Republic watching today. On first and ten, low snap. This is Werner on the keeper straight ahead. And trying to break tackles, but he, now a flag comes in at the very end of the play. Cowell and Engel were there to bring him down, and a flag came in as that play was wrapping up. Holding on the offense. Yeah, it's a holding call on Baldwin Woodville. That, that just changed changed their uh, offensive attack so that they had to pass and, and that's, and that's when uh, 
So this is going to back up the Blackhawks quite a bit here. This email says, Go Hawks! They're watching from Fargo, North Dakota, NDSU. The Friezes and the Hansons checking in today. Thank you very much for the email. A toss off the hands of the intended target. It was intended for Gavin Sell across the middle. Werner fired that one, but looked like it might have been just a little yeah, behind him there, well too. Well behind him, yeah. I'll tell you what, those are the scary ones offensively that, uh, you know, when the receiver has to turn back for it, he gets his hands on it, knocks it up into the air. Well, it's uh, clear sailing for a D-back, but there was nobody there that particular time. Turns a uh, first and 23 into a second down and 23 for the Blackhawks from their own 17. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Warner out of that familiar shotgun. Pump fake. Square now go. he's going to roll to the near side. Throws off his back foot. Caught! That's Fritz. And he's across the 35. Wrestled down around the 37-yard line by Braxton Knockreiner. But that's a big gainer. It's not enough for a first down, but it's going to make it a third and much more manageable. That's 21 yards. Yeah. He, so he threw that like a uh, side armor from years gone by Ooh. in baseball. He was getting tracked down, and he was rolling to his left and uh, threw that one sidearm and hit him right between the numbers. All right, third and about two, maybe a little less than that, and they keep it on the ground. And boy, going nowhere, Ryan Beanendahl on the carry. He could not turn the corner. He's going to lose yardage on the play. All the way back, it looks like, to about the 35. It's a loss of three, fourth, and a short five or a long four coming up for the Baldwin-Woodville Blackhawks. Well, here's a nice email that just came in. It says, get it done cards. That's from Lodi Football. Hey, cool. How, about, how nice is that? What sportsmanship? You know, they got a team in their conference cheering them on. Nice to hear from the folks from Lodi. We love going to Lodi. We yeah. love Lodi. They're, they're just great people over there. <laughs> and the they, facilities The facilities good are second to none. They have just a wonderful program over short there. Snap. Short snap. Yeah, short snap. We and on the keeper, I don't know if he got it. No way. He's going to be stopped well shy of the first down marker. And the ball is going to go over on downs to Columbus. With a minute 34 left in the first period on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard, it remains Columbus 13 and Baldwin Woodville 7. Mike, I'm going to tell you right now that that particular trick play, a snap on a punt, and then you go back to the onside kick, what does it tell you? It tells you that their coaching staff says, you know what, we're probably beat up front a little bit today. This group is going to be a little bit better than us. We're going to have to trick them. And that's what they're trying to do. And and the first one made it. This one didn't. First and 10, Columbus on the Baldwin-Woodville 37. And the give is to Brunel to the left side. He's to the 25, 20 down the sideline. 10, 5. Did he get in? Yeah. Touchdown, Columbus. Brunel. Colton Brunel, 37-yard scamper to pay dirt. That is his third touchdown of the quarter. And it's 19 to seven Cardinals. Third touchdown, four carries for a total of 79 yards and three touchdowns. And he just barely got in. And that far pylon across the way. Well, the extra point last time was blocked. Hines will try it again this time. Kick this time is up and it is good. So it is 20 to 7 in favor of Columbus on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. We're back in one minute. Daily Dodge TV, 95.3 WBEV. What's in your kids' lunchbox today? Turkey and bacon on honey whole wheat? Roast beef on sourdough? PB&J on cinnamon chip with bananas? That is bananas, but that's what fresh baked breads from Great Harvest can do for you. Unleash your sandwich ingenuity. So show your kids some lunchbox love with chicken salad on cranberry orange bread, Italian on cheddar garlic bread. Then show everyone your creation at Instagram or Facebook using this hashtag, Great Harvest Bread, the way it ought to be. Is it time to update the bathroom? Then it's time to head to Hometown Glass and Improvement of Beaver Dam. Hometown has a full complement of Vasco shower enclosures. 
Hometown Glass makes your selection of enclosures easy, and they provide hassle-free installation. When you purchase a Basco shower enclosure, your expectations will be exceeded. Hometown Glass promises you a classy, elegant, and luxurious centerpiece for your bathroom. Hometown Glass and Improvement, Highway 33 East of Beaver Dam, on the web at hometownglass.com. Minute and 22 seconds left in quarter number one on the John Deere Horicon Work scoreboard. Columbus leads Baldwin Woodville 20 to 7. Colton Brunel, three touchdowns already in the first quarter for Columbus. Hines' kick is in the air, end over end, and will be taking it around the 14 to the 15, 20, 25. This Ooh. is Smith, and he's out to about the 35, and actually across the 35 on a second effort. So a pretty nice return there of about 21, 22 yards. And that's where the Blackhawks will go to work. As I mentioned, lots of emails are coming in here. So we're going to get to those as we go along. This one says, uh, Mason to Colin, that dude Fritz for the TD is the play we were waiting to hear. Go Blackhawks. From the, is that the Rouse? I hope I'm pronouncing that right. R-A-U-S, the Rouse checking in today. With uh, that email, thank you very much. Yeah, and there's another one here. Go Blackhawks from Ooh. Darcy Rouse. Uh, they throw on first down to the 40, 45, 50, 45. This is Sell down the near sideline and finally pushed out of bounds. Inside the 30 at about the 26-yard line of Columbus. First down, Blackhawks. 36 yards. Yeah, this email says, go Blackhawks from your Minnesota fans, and uh, they're probably cheering that play just a moment ago. 129 yards through the air this time, this, thus far in the ball game for the Blackhawks. And I'll tell you what, uh, give Werner credit. He went to his secondary receiver that time, who was a bit underneath, and then the receiver that was down the field made a great play. Werner blocking. throws towards the end zone. That's it is caught inside the five. What a catch by Logan Gordon with a defender hanging all over him. 23 yards on that 23 one. 23 yards, it's first and goal for the Blackhawks So McKinstry's home furnishings first down. My goodness, this team is explosive. First and goal from the three yard line and as the ball is snapped, it's a procedure. Yeah, it's false start. False start penalty on the Blackhawks. That'll back them up five. This email says, uh, Joe, this is from Joe. He's checking in from Hudson. Says, my cousin Landon Egan is playing. Go Blackhawks, says Joe. Joe, thank you very much for the email today. Again, sports at dailydodge.com is where you'll find us. Sports at dailydodge.com. Uh, this one says, Baldwin for the win. That's from Parker. Parker Woodland. Thank you very much for the email, Parker. We do appreciate that. We'll get to some more here in a moment. All right, first and goal from the eight-yard line after the five-yard penalty. Low snap, and they reverse. run a reverse. And this is Hush. Now he's going to throw. Half-back option. It is Ooh, almost. incomplete and almost intercepted. <laughs> it was intended for Werner, actually, in the end zone. So they reverse. They run the reverse, and then they throw the option. And the intended target, Werner, in the back of the end zone, not able to come up with it. There's another one. They're pull, pulling out. They're pulling out all, all stops the today. stops. Yes, they, they are. They just know they're a bit out, man, and they're going to trickery, Mike. All right, second and goal from the eight for the Blackhawks. Warner hands Draw. it off. Draw play. And Smith. Fumble. Fumble. He Columbus lost the ball. It. And Eckern recovers it. Aaron Eckern recovers the fumble. Smith fumbled, and Eckern was Johnny on the spot. And, boy, that is the one thing that is really hurting Baldwin Woodville today with 10 seconds left in the first quarter, three turnovers already. And Eckern returns this week after being out yes. last week yes. with a concussion. What a great way to uh, come back and join your buddies in a big defensive play. All righty, so it's going to be first and 10 for Columbus from their own 11-yard line. We still have 10 seconds left in the first quarter. <laughs> I feel like I've been here for a week. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? All right, on first and 10. Cotter out of the gun. Brunel standing behind him. Cotter wants to throw. Across the middle. Caught. Oh. Nope, dropped. 
Mowbray with the intended target. He had it momentarily. He dropped it. The cover man was Colton Hush, the uh, cornerback. They were going to Brady Link on the uh, out and go, and uh, he was covered. Give the uh, Blackhawks credit. So he had to go underneath to Mowbray and uh, just a tick behind him. And I think if you talked to Mowbray, he'd probably tell you he should have had it. But uh, luckily it wasn't uh, popped up in the air and pick six going the other direction. Second and 10 for the Cardinals from their own 11 yard line. Five seconds left in the first quarter. 20 to seven Columbus on the John Deere Horicon work scoreboard. And the give to Brunel to the 10 and he gets taken down near the line of scrimmage. And that's the way the first quarter comes to an end after one here at Fireman's Park. Our score on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard, Columbus 20 and Baldwin Woodville 7. Stay with us. We're back in one minute on 95.3 WBEV and Daily Dodge TV. Kestrel Ridge Golf Course is cheering for the Columbus Cardinals on their journey through the postseason. Take advantage of fall rates and great course conditions by reserving your tee time online at KestrelRidgeGolf.com. Stop in for their fantastic Friday fish fry and dining specials. Kestrel Ridge also offers a beautiful event setting for your upcoming holiday party, wedding, or private event. Call to book your event today and check out KestrelRidgeGolf.com for more specials and information. Hi, my name is Michelle and I'm the plant manager for the Beaver Dam Kraft Heinz plant. I'm excited to share with you that we are rolling out new schedules to allow people more time with their families. Come meet me and my team and let us tell you about the exciting changes we are making to our schedules and our great benefits. Please go to careers.crafthines.com, search by Beaver Dam and see all the opportunities we have available. We believe family time is important. Our new schedule will allow you to have a schedule that works for you and your family. All shifts are 12 hours with up to three to four days off per week. We also offer shift differentials and premiums for weekend work at Kraft Heinz. Mike and Tim welcoming you back into Fireman's Park here in Columbus. And did I just hear that right? 1,800 viewers right now on our Daily Dodge TV video stream. Actually, that's that's 1,800 devices. It could be more than one viewer on each device. But we're glad you're with us on Daily Dodge TV and also on 95.3 WBEV. we got you coming and going today. We've got radio and we've got you on the uh, video stream. Hey, Mike, uh, one from last week. I got uh, R.J. Gross, who's a, uh, a nephew or something on that order, and uh, he wanted to give him best wishes. All right, as we start the second quarter, Columbus will move right to left as we see it, for those of you on the radio side. It's third down and 11 for Columbus from their own 11-yard line. Cotter wants to throw. And he's going to launch it down the middle of the field. It is caught by Knockreiter. He's across midfield, tackled inside the 45-yard line of Baldwin-Woodville. Braxton Knockreiner right down the middle. Cotter gets him in stride, and they'll mark it at the 44-yard line of Baldwin-Woodville. 45 yards on the reception. What a way to start the second quarter. It's a McKinstry's Home Furnishings first down for the Cardinals, who will lead this game 20 to seven on the John Deere Horicon Work scoreboard. First and 10, Columbus in Baldwin Woodville territory. The 44 hand up, Brunel breaks the tackle in the backfield. Can't get by the second man though, and that was a very nice defensive play by Eli Coonan, defensive end. Plays tight end on offense. One thing we didn't mention on the pregame, Mike, was the uh, size of the Blackhawks. They averaged 250 in the uh, offensive line, but when you got to give it to Brunel. 45-40, left side, 35, and he's tripped up inside the 35. That was uh, Smith and also Sell out there defensively bringing down Colton Brunel, but he picks up another. McKinstry's home furnishings first and 10. They'll mark it at the 32. So it's a gain of 12 on that play. Could have been more. Ladies and gentlemen, for you folks that are watching, keep your eye on Oliver Setz. There's a reason why he's in the backfield. And he's the fullback. You, yep. you should have seen that block on that last play. I hope you folks picked it up. That was massive. First and 10. Cardinals on the Blackhawks, 32. Cotter gives it to Brunel, and he's tripped up from behind. That's a great play by Logan Gordon. Bringing down Brunel for what appears to be no gain. No gain again, tackled by Gordon. So a second and 10 now will be coming up. 
This email says, Go Cardinals! And our nephew, R.J. Gross from J.D. and Angie. And they're in the Dominican Republic, it says. Holy cow. Didn't we say we, we had a yeah. – well, Ninja was saying that, uh, that we, we can track where the viewers tune in from. And uh, we th that was the one we had from the Dominican Republic. Well, thank you very much for the email. Cotter will throw. It is going to be caught by Link. And he's got another first down right near the 20-yard line as he runs out of bounds on the far side of the field. 11-yard gain, and uh, Brady Link uh, did a, a quick square out right there, had a half a step on his uh, defender, and an absolute strike. You know, sometimes we don't give Nathan Cotter everything that he's uh, really credited for. This kid's really good, and he uh, just does a great job with this club and leading them and everything. First and 10, Cardinals officially at the Blackhawk 21-yard line handoff to number 21, Brunel. He's taken down. And that's Logan Gordon again, who's made a couple of nice plays defensively. And Brunel, we don't see that very often. He lost two yards on the carry, so a second and 12 coming up. 9.29 and counting, left to go first half here on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. It's Columbus 20 and Baldwin Woodville 7. Our game today brought to you by our presenting video sponsors, Columbus Family Dental and Hometown Glass and Improvement. Today's game also brought to you by John Deere Horicon Works, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, and McKinstry's Home Furnishings. On second and 12 from the Baldwin Woodville 23. The give. Nope, Cotter. this is Cotter and the keeper. He's to the 20, right side, cut back. And he's to the 15 and down near the 10 yard line before being tackled by Davis Paulson. We'll you see where it. they spotted here, but he's going to be, oh, just about a half a yard shy of the first down marker. We're going to give him 11. Yep. And, uh, you know, that's the play right there. You know, you talk about leadership, experience, know-how uh, at the quarterback position. You know, you, you feed it and feed it and feed it to Brunel. And, uh, yeah, Brunel gets all the headlines, but Nathan Cotter just does all the little things to lead this ball club to victory every week. Third down and a yard for Columbus from the Blackhawk 12-yard line. Give to Brunel. He's to the 10. Got the first down as he is somersaulted down inside the 10-yard line near the 5. We're going to give him down to the 7. We're going to give him 5. Uh, McKinstry's home furnishings first and 10 for Columbus. You might have yeah, heard, first and goal. You, you might have heard Jared Fox in the background do his Marlon Hensler imitation right there. That was pretty good, Foxy. I'm starting to like it. Marlon is going to be out of a job here before long. I don't think Marlon has anything to worry about. Uh, he's up in uh, at the uh, state cross country meet today. Beautiful day for that up in Wisconsin Rapids. And the give is to Brunel. Spinning inside the five on first and goal from the seven and tripped up near the four. Going to give him three, 11 carries for uh, 97 yards. Mike, something we didn't mention when we came back at the break at the end of the first quarter. 29 plays in the first quarter from scrimmage for the Blackhawks. Six for Columbus, and they're up 20 to seven. How do you figure? It's a funny game, isn't it? It really is. All right, approaching the seven-minute mark and counting of the second quarter. Today's game brought to you in part by Lamers Bus Lines, Farmers and Merchants Union Bank, Prairie Ridge Health, and your Dare to Dream team at EXP Realty. Second and goal, Columbus from the four-yard line. Cotter gives to Brunel straight oh, ahead, yeah. through a hole, into the end zone, touchdown, Columbus. And that is Brunel's fourth touchdown of the game. A four-yarder makes it 26-7 to seven Columbus. Well, I'll tell you, Mike, uh, look at turnovers has been the uh, difference in this game. Uh, a fumble when uh, uh, Baldwin Woodville was down uh, near the 10-yard line. A, a couple of interceptions, Mike. And, uh, you know, this the game could be different, but very honestly, I mean, you can tell right from the get-go. Hines' uh, extra point is up and good. 27 to 7 Columbus. We're back in one minute. Daily Dodge TV 95.3 WBEV.
For every, where's the grocery list? I'll go to the store. So you'll fill up my car on the way home? Moment. If it has to do with your life and your money, it's a landmark moment. And Landmark Credit Union is here to help. With free checking accounts that offer you the choice of getting paid dividends on your balance or earning rewards points on your purchases. Opening an account is fast and simple and gives you access to Credit Hub, powered by Savvy Money, which shows your credit score so you can keep your finances healthy. Landmark Credit Union. Visit LandmarkCU.com, insured by NCUA. Lamer's Bus Lines. Our community needs you. What drives you? Drive for Lamer. I wanted to do something good for my community, and now I get to make a difference in kids' lives. Call or visit us at GoLamers.com for more information. There's only so much fishing a retired guy can do. What drives you? Drive for Lamer's. Our kids need us. I felt like I needed to do something good for my community. Call or visit GoLamers.com for more information. And I'm getting paid for it. Lamer's Bus Lines. Our community needs you. Penalty flag. Flag on the play. Beaten all return. All righty, as we come back, six minutes, 40 seconds left until intermission. And on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard, it's now Columbus 27, Baldwin Woodville 7. And there was a penalty on the kick return on the Blackhawks, which is going to back them up. The ball is going to be spotted at the 14-yard line where it will be first and 10, Baldwin, Woodville. Dangerous territory for the Blackhawks right now. This game could, uh, you know, is, is a bit out of hand right now, and uh, a major mistake here, it could be all but over. On first and 10, Warner back to throw. Good protection. Now he's being chased, and he'll get, he'll just throw it away, but... Yeah. He was a, he was about ready to go down for a safety in the end zone. A lot of the fans here in front of us are signaling safety, safety, but no, it's an incomplete pass. I, I would agree with that. Yeah, assessment. I would agree with that too. I yeah. mean, he, I don't think that's a safety. Well, you either. have to throw it past the line of scrimmage, right, Foxy? You got to throw it, which was no doubt about that. He threw it way down the field, but the uh, intended receiver was probably some 15 yards away plus. But, uh, yeah, I would go with that one. Again, sports at dailydodge.com. If you'd like to send us an email, we have a lot of emails to get to here momentarily. Sports at dailydodge.com. Send me your name, where you're from, who you're cheering for. On second and ten, Warner with a pump fake. Now rolling to the near side. Warner going to throw. It is, is it caught? No, out of bounds. Out of bounds. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's tough to tell from our angle he was. It was intended had, for sell you, right near the Columbus yeah. bench. I couldn't see it. Yeah, you were blocked out by the camera. I had a good look at it, Mike, and the official gave it the incomplete right off the get-go. 17th pass for the Blackhawks. They've already gained 152 yards in the air, Mike. It's been, uh, you know, they've had uh, some opportunities through the air, but uh, difficulty cashing in ever since that opening drive. On third and 10, Warner. With another pump fake, now throws left side. It is incomplete. Oh. Uh, the intended receiver fell down. Uh, that was Colton Hush. He was the only one in that zip code, and he fell down. And so it's going to bring up a fourth down and a punting situation here for Baldwin Woodville. Uh, this email says, I'm in Colorado watching my great nephew, Jackson Johansson, play for Baldwin Woodville. That's from uh, Lila checking in today. Thank you very much for the email. We appreciate that. Let's see what else we have here. This one says, uh, cheering on the Blackhawks from Woodville. That's from Scott checking in today. Here's Ooh, the nice punt. punt. Nice, high, floating punt. Link back at his 42, takes it to the 45. He's to the 50. He's going to be... Ushered. Shoved out of bounds. Ushered out of bounds. Ushered out of bounds, however you want to say it, <laughs> by Beanendahl at around the 40 or just shy thereof. You know, Link but Scott, thanks for your email. Appreciate it. Link just a sophomore. Am I right? I think. Let me take a look. Link here. is a junior. He is a junior? Yes. Okay. 
I'll tell you what, it, with, if, if Brunel wasn't on this ball club, he would be one heck of a back. I want to tell you. No doubt about it. Oh, we got a penalty on Columbus. We on do, yeah. This is going to back them up all the way to their own 45-yard line. I didn't see the flag, but uh, there was a penalty marker down. I'm assuming, is that a block in the back? It wasn't really clear the signal. The guys in the booth up here are as confused as I am. So it's uh, first and 10 for Columbus from their own 45. Still moving right to left, 6.01 to go. First, uh, the second quarter, I should say, on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Cotter wants to throw. And now he will step up. Throws. It is Ooh. incomplete. A little bit too Ouch. tall for Braxton Knockreiner. He was covered well by Wienendahl. Once again, uh, Cotter doing a really, really nice job moving his feet in the pocket. His first uh, receiver, his first alternate, first guy that he was looking at wasn't there. And then he just moved his feet, gained some time, and he had knock Reiner, but just overthrew him just a little bit. Second and 10 for the Cardinals, back of their own 45. And to think of it, you know, I'd have a hard time throwing a football straight if I had, uh, you know, 250-pound guys coming straight at me. Oof, doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun. Hand off Brunel. He's to the 45 and then tackled around the 48-yard line. That was, I, I believe, Elijah Heimer in on the stop there. I got Brunel now for uh, 104 yards gained on 13 carries. Gain of four in that last play. Third and six for the Cardinals from their own 48-yard line with receivers left and right. Cotter takes the low snap. Uh -oh, Pass is batted down. Eli Coonan with his big paw swatted that one down. And it's fourth down for Columbus. Coonan, 6'6", 215 pounds and a senior. And he swatted that one down like it was nothing. Oh, by the way, uh, Milana Aragon is, uh, is in the lineup. So Columbus forced to punt it away here. Braxton Knockreiner will punt it. Uh, Columbus with a new uh, long snapper. Good snap. Got to get it away. Ooh, and he that was just close. did sell Woo. the deep man, and he's just going to get away from it. It's going to bounce at around the 17-yard line and be down there by Columbus. So with 5.04 to go in the uh, second quarter, it's first and 10 for First and 10 for Baldwin Woodville, and they'll have it at around their own, as I said, 17 yard line. Another email to get to here uh, taking a break from deer hunting to cheer on the cards. Thanks for the live stream. That's from Tony Benish checking in today. This one says, Go see bus. It says, uh, Best of luck to the Columbus Cardinals today, especially our favorite, Jamo Sullivan. Love, Auntie and Jax from Columbus. Oh, baby. And here we go on first down out to the 31-yard line was Cal Smith. First down, Blackhawks. And that's a McKinstry's Home Furnishings first and 10. 12-yard gain there. For the Blackhawks on the 12-yard run by Smith out to roughly the 30-yard line. By the way, Jamison Sullivan was the long snapper on that punt, mm -hmm. taking the place of Milani Aragon, who we think has an arm injury to some degree. And they'll keep it on the ground on this next play. Didn't gain a whole lot. Let's see, that was Logan Gordon on the carry. Gordon Picked up, carry. boy, a little less than uh, two. I'm going to say one. All right, you call it a long one, I'll call it a short two. You take your pick. At home, 422 and counting left. In period number two, second and eight. And this is Werner throwing. And it's going to be incomplete intended nice for Fritz at around the 40-yard line of Columbus, and that's excellent coverage by Braxton Knockreiner. Yeah, he was he, there stride for stride. Yeah, he was uh, trailing the play with his back to the ball, but he never put his hands up in the air, which, tell me if I'm wrong, Foxy, is that a penalty in high school? Yes or no? no? It's not a penalty in high school, but it is in college and the pros. I know that much, yeah. Yes. But he didn't put his hands up, and the ball hit him right in the back of the helmet. Third and eight, 
Baldwin Woodville from their own 30. And another long throw down the field. It is intercepted. intercepted. Braxton Knockreiner near the 30. Flags on the play. He's to the 35. Oh, He's to the 40 and tackled around the 43. Pass was intended for Sell. Knockreiner intercepts it on the overthrow. And let's see what we've got here. His flags started coming out immediately after uh, Knockreiner started heading the other way. I think it's a post possession after yep after the uh, interception a block in the back yep by uh, one of his uh, so Columbus buddies. keeps the ball but it'll back him up his brother got him his Riley did yeah Riley Docker yeah <laughs> hey why not he's trying to help out his big bro all right so the penalty is going to push it back but it is Columbus football and they're going to have it at their own 20 yard line. With 3.58 remaining until halftime, it is 27 to 7. Columbus leading Baldwin Woodville on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. And McKinstry's home furnishings first and 10 now for the Cardinals from their own 20. And Cotter out of the gun. Gives it to Brunel, coming to the near side. Trying to turn the corner. He's to the 20. Cut back. 25 30. Boo! And he lowers the shoulder. And gets out to about the 35-yard line. He lowered the boom on Jackson Johansson, who was trying to steer him out of bounds. There's a flag down, and it's a hold on Columbus. That one's coming back. Just as I looked back, I saw the yellow penalty marker on the carpet, and this referee was signaling a holding call. So that will back up Columbus now with under four minutes left to play in the second quarter. You know, the secret to being a, a good back is you have to deliver the hit as opposed to the defender hitting you. Uh, guess what? That poor kid that uh, made that tackle on that play, he's going to feel it tomorrow. Ooh, that had to hurt. First and 10. You beg your pardon. First and 17 for Columbus. Back at their 13-yard line. And the handoff to Brunel. He spins up across the 15 to about the 16. And he's taken down there by... Paulson, so a short gainer there. More emails to get to. This one says they're listening today from Rome, Wisconsin. Not Rome, not the other Rome you're thinking of. Um, <laughs> it's listening from Rome, Wisconsin. From That's from Steve Gates and Mary Ann checking in today. Steve, hey, Mary Ann, thank you. I, I had a friend in college by the name of Steve Gates. Really? Couldn't be the same one. Steve, if you went to Platteville, let us know, will you? They're not, they're not cheering from Rome, Italy. They're cheering from Rome. Is that the Rome, Rome down yeah. here in southeast Wisconsin, or is there one up north? I don't know. Okay. Don't ask me. I, here's Cotter to throw. Downfield, got a man. Oh. It is incomplete, intended for Riley Knockreiner, who had a step or two on the defenders. And a third down and uh, 15 coming up. This uh, email says the Cotter Soda Fan Club in Germania is cheering on Nathan and Johnny Cotter and the whole Columbus team. Thank you very much for that email today. Let's see what else we have here. Go Cardinals. And uh, this one, that's from Sam checking in today. Sam Kolbaum. Thank you for the email. We'll get to some more here in a moment. We've got a timeout, Sports at, Mike. Yeah, we do. Yep. Timeout brought to you by Reed Chrysler, Dodge, wow. Jeep, Ram. Let our family Take care of your family. We'll keep it here with 3.01 to go first half and Columbus leading 27-7 over Baldwin-Woodville on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Let's get to some more emails during the timeout. Uh, let's see. This one is going to – this one's – hang on here. Got to get back to my uh, right screen. This one says, best of luck to the Blackhawks. Also, congratulations to Tim Meinholz and the Marching Cardinals on a great season. Play loud today. That's from the Baldwin-Woodville Marching Band. How about that? Love that email. That's fantastic. Uh, what else do we have here? This one says, cheering on cousin Colin Selk and Columbus from Nashville, Tennessee. Go Cardinals. Thanks for showing all the games for all of us out-of-state fans. That's from Chris Kelm. Chris, thank you very much for the email. Uh, this one says, shout out to Uncle Nick. Nick Venden, quarterback coach for the Cardinals. That's from the Coughlins. Eric, Abby, Wyatt, and Brooks. All checking in today. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see what else we have here. This one says, I hear Foxy's doing a great job on the PA today. Go Columbus, Andy O'Brien. That's just mere watching rumors. Watching in Fall mere, River. Yeah, mere rumors. Maybe, maybe. See how rumors get started? Ugh. 
We'll get to some more emails here shortly. Again, keep them coming, folks, and we'll take them uh, as many as you want to send. Sports at DailyDodge.com. Sports at DailyDodge.com. I'll take your name, where you're from, and who you're cheering for, among other things. We're having fun interacting with you like we always do. It's third and 15 for Columbus from their own 15. Cotter throwing. Caught right side. Sets. He breaks a tackle. 20. And breaks another tackle, 25. Are He's you to the, oh. dives to the 30, and he fumbled the football. He is about. He's oh. down. They're saying he's yeah, down. He, did he get enough for the first down, though? I don't, I don't think, think so. he did. He is going to be about a foot short, I think. Oh, what a play by Oliver Setz. A, a gain on the play of, uh, well, we're going to give him 14 yards. He needed, uh, oh, there's a penalty flag on the play. Oh, man. And that's a holding Another call hold. on Columbus. Jeez. Yep, going to push him back again. Ninja, how many viewers are we up to right now, or devices are we up to right now? Uh, we're up to just shy of 2,400. Just shy of 2,400 devices right now tuned into this broadcast on Daily Dodge TV. That doesn't even count the number of radio listeners we have on 95.3 WBEV. Hey, there's no Badger game today. This is right. one of, probably one of the few high school games in the state today, so we're glad you're with us. If you're new to DailyDodge.com and, and WBEV, welcome. We're glad that you're with us. Thanks for tuning in. And you can have this much fun every Friday night. Every in the Friday fall, night, folks. exactly. Come on. All right, it's third and 25 for Columbus. They're back at their own five yard line after that penalty. 235 left in the second quarter. Cotter gives it up to Brunel. Stumbles, and he gets taken down for a loss. That was Coonan. Minus two. Coonan drops him for a loss. And Columbus is going to have to punt from the shadow of their own goalpost with 2.19 and counting left until the break. On the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard, it remains Columbus 27, Baldwin Woodville 7. But on a fourth and 26, Knockreiner's back right by his own goalpost. Going to have to punt this away. And he gets the punt away. Bounce. Nope. And it's fielded right at the 35 to the 30. This is Sell, and he's hit hard near the 31-yard line and pushed back. Riley Knockreiner along with Ty Cowell there to bring him down. Well, with Columbus going to get the uh, opening possession in the uh, second half, Mike, the word imperative comes to my mind right now for the Blackhawks. they got to put seven on the board here just to get back in the ball game and to start feeling good about themselves right now. They got a pretty bad taste in their mouth as, uh, you know, they're down three scores, and uh, they got to have something really positive happen to make them feel a little bit better at halftime. All right, first and 10 for Baldwin-Woodville at the Columbus 28. Warner, good protection, throws. It is, I, is it caught? Yes, it's caught inside the 10. What a grab by Fritz. And how did Werner sling that into coverage like that? Oh, my goodness. Fritz picks up 19. 19 yards on the reception. First and goal, Baldwin Woodville from the nine. Low snap. Werner pressure coming. Throws caught at the six. And Aaron Eckern is going to tackle the receiver, Sean Van Someren. Van Someren made the catch, but he was taken down almost immediately. They mark it actually at, looks six. like, the six. So it was a pickup yeah, three. of three. Yep, and a second and goal now for the Blackhawks from the six. Clock is running. Exactly one minute to go until halftime. On second and goal from the six. Here is Warner. Going to throw a fade to the right corner of the end zone. It is you got it. caught. Yep. Touchdown, Baldwin Woodville. Gavin Sell hauls it in with a defender all over him. And with 50 seconds remaining until halftime, it's 27 to 13, Columbus. What a grab. That is incredible. Well, they sold out that time on the, uh, on the quick out and uh, credit Columbus's cornerback. He was right there. But, you know, you're very honestly, how are you going to defend an absolutely perfect pass? It was absolutely it was, it was perfect. well thrown and what and, a grab. Well, he went up to the uh, you know the high point. He high pointed the uh, the reception and that's just a, a good job. Here's the extra point attempt by Paulson. It's up and good. 
So it's now 27 to 14, Columbus. Let's take a one minute break. We're back in one minute on Daily Dodge TV and 95.3 WBEV. Hi, this is Sandy from McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam. We are proud to support all area athletes. While at home watching or listening to your favorite sports team, why not be comfortable? McKinstry's is a Lazy Boy Comfort Studio. We have sofas, recliners, sectionals, and reclining sofas in stock and ready for prompt delivery. Stop into McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam and add comfort to your home. Year after year, McKinstry's. At Prairie Ridge Health, we believe that orthopedics is more than surgery. It's about getting your life back. Our collaborative team of expert surgeons, therapists, and nurses work together to get you back to feeling pain-free in your daily life. Our innovative and proven program is designed to get you from hospital to home with confidence. Find out how the Prairie Ridge Health orthopedic team can help you at prairieridge.health. Prairie Ridge Health accepts over 70 major insurances, including Dean. We are rapidly approaching halftime here at Fireman's Park in Columbus. Mike Tronson alongside my good friend and partner, Tim Haldeman, with 50 seconds remaining in the second quarter on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. It's now 27 to 14, Columbus leading Baldwin Woodville. Today's game brought to you in part by Kestrel Ridge Golf Course, Cardinal Lanes in Columbus, Ergo Bank, Columbus Country Club, Surefire, Richards Insurance, Bayside Supper Club, Landmark Credit Union, Preferred Dental Partners, Air Care, Metalcraft of Mayville, Slumberland, Kraft Heinz, Great Harvest Bread Company, and Jerry's Automotive. All righty, Blackhawks with a very important touchdown a moment ago. There's a ground ball squib kick. Fell, it's just fallen on by Braxton Knockreiner at around his own 34-yard line. And so that's where Columbus will set up shop with the McKinstry's Home Furnishings first down and 10. This email says, let's go Cards, cheering for Seabus. Proud of all that has been accomplished so far. Keep it rolling to Camp Randall. That's from Tony Balwig. Tony, thank you very much for the email today. This one says, Julie Benish, watching hometown Columbus football from Marshfield, Wisconsin. Go Cardinals, go from Julie, checking in on the broadcast today. First and 10. Cotter to throw, and he will launch it downfield. It is oh. intercepted at the 34-yard line of Baldwin-Woodville. Cal Smith with an interception. Oh, my goodness. These guys are athletic, are they not? That was a case of the safety just playing center field. Yep, he just he, leaped he just, and got it. He read the eyes of of uh, Nathan Cotter, and, uh, you know, the, the uh, original – D-backs had pretty good coverage, but the safety coming over, read his eyes, and got there just at the right time to prevent the reception. The ball was on time. Everything was good, but credit the safety for some really good defense. 41 seconds remaining in the half, and Baldwin-Woodville with one timeout remaining. This is Warner, and he faked the throw. Now he's going to step up and run with it, and he'll get across the 35 and then get taken down by Milani Aragon at around the 38, maybe the 39. We'll see where they spot it. I'm, I'm a little surprised that they're yeah, uh, called playing the 39, uh, actually. Gain of four, second and six. Here is another throw. It is caught across the middle. Fritz breaking tackles and gets across the midfield stripe. That's a first down and more as they'll mark it at the 46-yard line of Columbus. 15-yard gain on 15 that 15-yard pickup and a timeout. Yes, timeout has been called by Baldwin-Woodville. This timeout brought to you by Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Let our family take care of your family. This email says, yes, Tim, it's uh, UWP. Steve Gates caught the broadcast last Are weekend, too. Me? He says, hope you're doing well, he says. Uh, is he the guy that played hockey? And I was the, uh, you got to ask, did he play hockey? Well, you're asking UW him right Blackwell. now. Yeah, right back, Steve. Let's see here. This one, uh, this email says, this one says, Joe Zander is a poor man's Colin Selk. <laughs> That's the best one of the day, folks. <laughs> Go Cardinals. Well, Joe's slimmed down from his playing <laughs> days, you know. That is the best one we've had all day. 
That's from uh, – I hope he doesn't get mad if I say his name. His name is Matthew. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great email, folks. This one says, let's go Hawks. Plenty of time. You got this. Angie checking in with that email today. Again, you can email us, sports at dailydodge.com. Sports at dailydodge.com. Send me your name, where you're from, who you're cheering for. I've got a few more emails to get to here momentarily, so if you sent one and I haven't read it yet, I will get to you. First and 10. Baldwin Woodville on the Columbus 46. Warner off his back foot, throws. Caught on the far side of the field, and rolling out of bounds is Fritz after making the reception. That's another McKinstry's home furnishings first and 10. Six seconds remaining in the half. They mark it at the 30-yard line, so it was a gain of 16 on that pass play. So six seconds, no timeouts. You've got, what, one shot here really at the end zone. Six seconds to go. First and 10, Baldwin Woodville. No, they're going to try a field goal? No, it's a fake. It's got to be, right? This is going to be... 47 yards. 47 yard field goal attempt. Oh my gosh. It's got the distance. Let's see. It's good. Perfect. Oh my goodness. Whoa. Paulson with a 47 yard field goal as time expires at the end of the half. And it's 27 to 17. That may be one of the longest field goals I've ever seen at the high school level. And we knew Paulson was good. I'm, I'm stunned. That was incredible. Well, I'll tell you what, you tell me that you're stunned. I'll tell you what, I think the Columbus football team knows they're they're a little stunned right now as well. Wow. What a turn of events in the last uh, three, four minutes of this first half. We got ourselves a game, Mike. Game on here at Fireman's Park. We have reached halftime, and on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard at the break, it is Columbus 27 and Baldwin Woodville 17. Stay with us. Our halftime report comes up. We'll take a three-minute break. Back in three minutes on Daily Dodge TV and 95.3 WBEV. Did you know you don't have to suffer with loose, poor-fitting dentures? What if you didn't have to worry about gluing in your dentures just to have a meal with friends and family? At Preferred Dental Partners, we can provide a better way with dental implants. These implants can be done in our office and many times can be used to hold in the dentures you already have. Call the doctors at Preferred Dental Partners to see how they can help you eat worry-free. You can find Preferred Dental Partners in Beaver Dam and Horicon or online at pdpdentist.com. Hey, it's Stacy with Slumberland, Beaver Dam and Watertown. Stop in and see everything that our store has to offer. We built it just for you. We have mattresses, box springs, power bases, bedroom sets, furniture, living room sets, dining sets, everything that you would need to complete your entire home. We've got our interest-free financing and a really great local staff here to help you. So you've got all local people here to help you out from start to finish for anything that you would need. So stop in, shop local, and save big with us. Welcome back to our live coverage of stunt magician Merlin Wormwood, brought to you by Surefire, your leading local installer of Lennox Home Comfort Systems. That's right, Matilda. Merlin Wormwood has locked himself in his mother's basement and is refusing to install a Lennox Home Comfort System from Surefire until she promises to start making him pizza bagels every Friday evening. Chuck, I'm sorry. How is this stunt magic? Isn't this just a lame protest? Mm, have you tried his mom's pizza bagels? They're incredible. When we come back, what's the secret behind Merlin's mother's pizza bagels? And the latest weather report with Surefire, up next. With a finance plan to fit every budget, today is the time to upgrade to new Lennox Home Comfort System from Surefire, your local Lennox premier dealer. Online at surefireinc.com. Be sure with American drivers overpay an average of $368 per year on their auto insurance. Why? Because, well, insurance is hard. It's complicated. It's time-consuming to get quotes from multiple companies, so we overpay. Or we call Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Make one call and receive a quote from a great company like Auto Owners Insurance. The team at Richards Insurance will literally do all the work for you. So if you could be saving money each month with an Auto Owners Insurance policy, you'll know about it. How much will you save with Richards Insurance? To find out, call Richards Insurance or stop in at 123 North Spring Street, downtown Beaver Dam. 
with offices in Columbus, Watertown, West Bend, and Oshkosh. With over 50 employees and hundreds of years insurance experience across five offices, you'll get full service counseling with no obligation. Your auto owner's insurance carrier is Richards Insurance in Beaver Dam. Call 887-1615. We'll be there with you. Richards Insurance of Beaver Dam. And we welcome you into our halftime show here at Columbus High School, Fireman's Park. Mike Trons and Tim Haldeman with you on Daily Dodge TV and 95.3 WBEV. We also want to thank Ninja, a.k.a. Justin Wilski, along with his assistant, Alex. They are our on-site videographers and engineers today. And, of course, we would be remiss if we didn't thank Kyra back at the 95.3 studios for engineering our radio simulcast today. Two quarters of play in the books in this Division Four Level 2 playoff game. And at halftime, it's Columbus leading Baldwin-Woodville 27-17 to on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. The winner of this game advances to Level 3 next weekend. And waiting in the wings for the winner of this game is going to be Ellsworth. Ellsworth last night defeated... St. Croix Central, 28-13. to Ellsworth is the number two seed in this bracket. So if Columbus hangs on to win this game, Ellsworth would travel here to Columbus next weekend. If Baldwin would come back and win this game, Baldwin-Woodville, they would travel to Ellsworth, which for them is not very far from home. That's only about maybe uh, 10, 15 minutes down the road. But uh, that is the team awaiting the winner of our contest here Ellsworth versus either Columbus or Baldwin Woodville next week in level three also on the lower side of this bracket Little Shoot and Freedom have both advanced to level three and they will play each other at Little Shoot next weekend with the winner of that game meeting the winner of the Ellsworth game against Columbus or Baldwin Woodville in level four are those two in the same league Mike do you know they're which, not very which far two, apart. Which two you Little about? shoot and freedom. Uh, they, I think they are. I would think, I think they're they fairly are. close. Yep. So I, uh, I'm not 100 percent sure, but yes, I believe that they are. But well, I right now can't. we've got a dogfight here, Tim Alderman. 27 yeah. to 17. That was an entertaining first half, to say the least. And I'm still, my jaw is still on the floor from a 47-yard field goal successfully made by Davis Paulson of Baldwin-Woodville as time expired at the end of the half. Now, I knew he was a good kicker. We talked about him. I talked to Coach Dan Kiefer about him a little bit this week, but I wasn't expecting that. 47 yards with room to spare. Yes, uh, I was going to just mention that, Mike, without a doubt. That was easily good from 50. I'm not going to say 55, but 50, yes, without a doubt. And there is... Uh, there's no breeze here today. Oh, there's just a little bit of a breeze. Not much. If uh, I really don't know which direction it's come, we don't have a flag to look at here. But uh, it's going. It's cross. He was going into the wind, which wasn't. Which isn't a whole lot of wind. Oh, there is a flag over there. See some flags behind yeah. the baseball yeah. backstop. It's you more, can see the it's flags there. It's a little there, more yeah. right to left, actually. Probably, probably didn't hinder the kick one way or the other. Just a whole bunch. But the trajectory on the kick, Mike, was absolutely perfect. It was perfect. I mean, yes. it was something that you'd see on at Camp Randall on a Saturday afternoon or uh, even in Green Bay. I mean, to tell you, that was uh, rather well done. And that kid's got a future in kicking without a doubt. So uh, we've got ourselves a dogfight here. We'll just take a look at some uh, quick stats here uh, throughout the first half. Um, an interesting stat is plays from scrimmage. <coughs> Excuse me for just a second. Yeah, it sort of choked me up, very honestly. Plays from scrimmage. 40 plays for the Blackhawks, of which uh, 25 of them were through the air. They've gained 211 yards through the air, 13 grabs completed for 211 yards, 15 carries on the ground for a grand total of 38. So 249 net yards for the Blackhawks in this uh, first half of play. And uh, then, as we mentioned, you know, at the end of the first quarter, the uh, plays were 29-6. to six, And uh, Baldwin-Woodville in the lead at that point, but the score was 20-7. to seven. And very honestly, you thought that things were getting away a little bit from 
from the Blackhawks, well, it got further away. It was 27 to 27, 20 to 7, and then 27 to 7 was the score. And you're going like, oh boy, uh, Baldwin Woodville, you better hang on tight. It's going to get out of range for you. Well, guess what? They've scored 10 unanswered here to finish out in the last uh, three, four minutes of the second quarter. And uh, taking a look at the stats for Columbus in this first half, two for seven through the air for a total of 56 yards. And uh, on the ground to 16 carries for 116 yards, of which 115 of those, pardon me, 105 of those you can uh, attribute to uh, Colton Brunel. You know, he early on he had uh, 11 carries for 97 yards. Since that time, he's had... Uh, four carries for a grand total of eight yards. So they found something defensively that uh, is starting to bottle up. Uh, um, did I say Jason Brunel? Colton. Did Brunel. I say Colton? Okay, whatever. Now Jason's his dad. Known him a lot longer. All right. But uh, anyway, um, they're, um, he's just done a great, everybody's done a great job. Um, you know, I, I, one thing I want to see just a little bit more, and I want to see Nathan Cotter hang on to the football a little bit more running the football. I think he can run the football four or five times in the second half, and, and he can be a really, really uh, advantage offensively to Columbus. No doubt. You know, I, I just gave you uh, four carries for eight yards the last four times he's touched the ball. You got to start opening up that uh, that area for Brunel a little bit more, and, and and offering the defense another subject to handle. You know, get Brunel more involved running in the offense. That that's something to watch for here in the second half. Let's take a look at the first half scoring summary, and Columbus normally pretty good uh, fast starts. Today, it was Baldwin-Woodville that got on the board first. Uh, with 5.53 remaining in the first period, it was Colton Hush with a one-yard touchdown. Extra point was good, and it was 7 nothing Baldwin-Woodville. Baldwin-Woodville then, they do an onside kick after that touchdown. They recover, but they turn the ball over right after they recover the kick. That was uh, the Jamison Sullivan interception. And Columbus takes advantage just a few seconds later with a 30-yard touchdown run by Colton Brunel. The extra point tacked on by Hines, and that tied the game at 7. So we had the Baldwin-Woodville touchdown and the first Colton Brunel touchdown were less than a minute apart. Uh, so that fast. It changed that fast. 7-7 at that point. Then with 3.18 to go in the first quarter, Colton Brunel with a 10-yard run to pay dirt. The extra point was no good. It was blocked. 13-7 Columbus with 3.18 to go in the first quarter. With a minute 22 left in the first quarter, Brunel found the end zone again, this time from 37 yards out. Another touchdown run for him, his third of the game. Extra point was good. 20-7 Columbus. That was our score at the end of the first quarter. 20-7 Cardinals on top of the Blackhawks. Flip ahead to about midway through the second period with 6.49 remaining in the second. Colton Brunel with his fourth rushing touchdown of the game. Appropriately, a four-yard run for his fourth touchdown. The extra point was good by Hines, 27-7. And that's what you mentioned earlier, Tim, where it looked like things might be getting away from Baldwin-Woodville. Oh, hold the phone. With 50 seconds remaining in the second quarter, it was Mason Werner tossing a six-yard touchdown pass to Gavin Sell. Extra point tacked on to make it 27-14 to in favor of Columbus. And then, as time expires at the end of the first half, Davis Paulson kicks a 47-yard field goal with room to spare. And that's how the half ends. And it brings the Blackhawks to within 10 at the break, 27-17. Our score on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. But Davis Paulson, that is one of the longest field goals I've ever seen at a high school football game. Um, I don't know if it's the longest, but it's got to be right up there. He And he had plenty of leg on that one. Yes, agreed, Mike. And, and I'll tell you what, I would like to pick the brain right now 
of the Columbus coaching staff with, uh, you know, uh, 50 seconds left, and they're up uh, 27-14. Baldwin-Woodville had just scored. Uh, you, you, you know, very honestly, you've controlled the game even though you've been outgained considerably. It, it, you just feel pretty good about things, you know? I would like to know, looking back, you know, hindsight's 2020. but would you like to have just ran out the first half, given it to Brunel for two plays, having him gain uh, 10 or 15 yards, whatever, okay, and gone to the uh, locker room, 27-14, as opposed to what they actually did was they opened it up on the first play and uh, credit Baldwin Woodville, the safety, made a great play coming over for the uh, pick. And, uh, you know, three or four plays later, they used the clock well. They only had one timeout left. And uh, they came up with an extra three points. I'm sure that if you ask the coaching staff right now, they would probably say, yeah, I, we probably should have ran it out be interesting to ask question for somebody else there you go. <laughs> what that is hey uh, again send us an email during the broadcast sports at daily dodge.com sports at daily dodge.com i'll take your name where you're from who you're cheering for we've had a lot of emails come in already and here's some more to get to this one says uh thank you for the live stream cheering on the baldwin woodville blackhawks and my adopted nephew logan gordon from Denver, Colorado. That's from Jay. Jay, thank you very much for checking in today. This one says, cheering from Ellsworth for the Blackhawks and Colton er, and Colin Fritz. That's from Tracy. Tracy, thank you very much for being with us today. Glad you're enjoying the, the game so far. Uh, let's see. This one says, uh, this is from Joe Zander. It says, Matthew, I appreciate you considering me to even be in the same level as Mr. Selk, even if it's a poor man version. <laughs> Go Cards. That's from our good friend Joe Zander. Uh, this one says, hey, guys, Curtis from Baldwin. Um, and he's checking in from Baldwin, wondering about Colton Brunel. He says, is he a senior, and does he have any after high school football ambitions? Well, <laughs> one, he's a junior. Yes, and he, and he already, already has the Columbus and high school he record. Already, yes, he yes. already has the career rushing record for Columbus High School. And as far as his after uh, high school ambitions, what I can tell you is he's going to be playing on Saturday somewhere. There's <laughs> yeah. no doubt uh, he will be playing somewhere on Saturdays in the near future. I had a chat with uh, Father Jason prior to the game today about that exact thing. Mm -hmm. Needless to say, that's as far from their mind right now, right, right. family-wise, as you could possibly get. But, you know, when, when you're that talented, you're going to have people looking at you. And uh, just to uh, leave a, uh, a secret out there to most folks, there is a school just down the road some uh, 35 minutes or so that is highly interested. Let's put it that way. We'll, we'll just leave it, leave at, it that. at that. Yeah. And then one more email to get to here. This one, so this is a response to your question, Tim, from Steve Gates. Yes, I played hockey. Still get together with a number of the players, Pat, Barry, Saul, and John. <laughs> Good gracious. Oh, man. I, I got to have his – you got his email address? Uh, it's there. Yeah, okay. I can yeah, it. I yeah. We'll have to steal that from you later. But, man, you, you know, you went to Eau Claire, and uh, I am guarantee you, Steve, you're listening right now, I can remember a lost weekend in Eau Claire when it was about 15 degrees below zero, and, and uh, we played um, in Beloit on a Friday night, drove all night long, slept in a, uh, in a dorm lobby at Eau Claire, and um, then we went to uh, play hockey, and then we played hockey again the next day. And it was about 15 degrees below zero outside, and I, I rode back home in the back of a V-dub that didn't want to start. Woo, baby, those were the days. Let's take a one-minute break. We're back in one minute to start the second half on Daily Dodge TV and 95.3 WBEV. Are you ready for peace of mind? Chad Guzzi here, owner of Air Care and Beaver Dam. If you're tired of unexpected repair bills, you want to sign up for our total care plan. It ensures top performance and prolonged life of your heating and air conditioning equipment. AirCare's Total Care customers receive annual inspections as well as a reduced maintenance rate plus a 10% discount on all service repairs. AirCare, big enough to serve you, small enough to care, 920-356-8860. 
at the Bayside Supper Club on Thursdays from 5 to 8.30. You can have the famous chicken wing and rib combo for $12.99, 10-ounce prime rib for $16.99, or all-you-can-eat deep-fried fantail shrimp for $14.99. Friday is the all-you-can-eat chicken and fish seafood buffet from 4.30 to 9. And Saturday is the prime rib shrimp seafood buffet from 5 to 8.30. Sunday brunch is back every Sunday from 10.30 to 1.30. Book your wedding, anniversary, or birthday celebration now for 2022. Yeah, well, just about ready to start the third quarter of this level two Division Four playoff game. 27 to 17, Columbus leads Baldwin Woodville as we start the third quarter. And you know, we were talking about uh, the good old days of college. You were mentioning Eau Claire, Tim. I went to, of course, uh, I, I went to school at UW Eau Claire, and I used to hang out in Baldwin a lot. Uh, I, I worked for WEAU Channel 13 in Eau Claire back in the mid 90s, and. I was a sports photographer. I used to go to high school football and basketball games and other sporting events, shoot highlights for the news, and I used to get to Baldwin rather frequently. And uh, I'm, you know, I've, I've driven through there many times on my way to and from my home in Minneapolis, and I've stopped many times at those fine fast food establishments uh, off the interstate there. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you this, Tim, and a lot of folks would probably get a kick out of this. I actually marched in a parade in downtown Baldwin back in the 1990s. That is a true story, and the story goes that a good friend of mine from college, her dad was running for St. Croix County Sheriff, and he was walking in the parade, you know, shaking hands and, and, and you know, stumping for votes, and he had myself and his daughter, my friend, and a bunch of us walking around. We were handing out candy and leaflets saying, hey, vote for Tom, vote for Tom, and so I actually marched in a parade one summer in Baldwin, Wisconsin, you know, chances are and, she's probably listening right now. Well, she could be. Uh, yeah. You know, you never Please. know. Uh, and you're wondering to yourself, did he win? Uh, unfortunately, he did not win. But uh, he was a longtime uh, deputy with the St. Croix County Sheriff's Department. And uh, I remember that. So uh, I have a connection. I, I like to think I have a connection to all of you folks up in the uh, Baldwin-Woodville area. Because, again, I, I used to spend a lot of time up there in my college days working for WEAU Channel 13, and I still drive through on my way home to see my family in Minneapolis quite a bit. Well, I'm in hopes that if Columbus does win this ball game today, that the game is played on Friday night as opposed to Saturday. Saturday, right. That's what I'm hoping for. Columbus gets the opening uh, kick in the second half. Here's the end over end kick. That is a kick. Link, yes, back to the one-yard line, to the five. He's to the 10. He's to the 15, breaks a tackle, 20, breaks another tackle, 25, and he will get taken down right around the 30 or just shy of. That's we a 29-yard return. We've got, a, I think, an injured player down for Baldwin-Woodville. Just underway here in the third quarter. And they're tending to an injured player right now. I didn't see exactly what happened. Tell you what, let's take a one-minute break. Let's take a one-minute break back after this on... Daily Dodge TV 95.3 WBEV. Cardinal Lanes in Columbus is proud to support the Columbus Cardinal football team. Cardinal Lanes is now open and the place to go when you want to have a great time with friends and family. Check out their 12 lanes of bowling and a large event space. They also feature a great menu and weekly specials like Friday Fish Fry. Follow Cardinal Lanes on Facebook and check them out online at cardinallanescolumbus.com. Cardinal Lanes, open seven days a week, 1030 a.m. to midnight. Go Cardinals and let the good times roll. As the Columbus Cardinals wrap up their playoff season, golf season is winding down. But the fun continues at Columbus Country Club. Check out their new menu with great sandwiches, jumbo wings, and handmade pizzas, and enjoy their Friday fish fry year-round. Get ready for prime rib every other Saturday starting in January. This winter, join Columbus Country Club for Euchre tournaments and Sunday brunch. Follow on Facebook and stop in Highway 73 right in the middle of Columbus behind Fireman's Pavilion. Columbus Country Club, a proud supporter of the Columbus Cardinals. That's a major loss. And a round of applause as we come back. That's because the injured player for Baldwin-Woodville, Gavin Sell, is now off the field. He is walking off the field with some assistance very gingerly over to his own bench, but he was down for a little bit, and that's always a scary thing, and let's hope he's okay. But uh, looking at him right now, he's walking 
with some assistance very gingerly, and he's he's made it over to his bench. And uh, let's hope that it's not serious, but uh, always scary when we see those things happen. But it's going to be a first and 10 for Columbus from their own 30-yard line. They move right to left as we see it in the third quarter. For those of you listening on the radio, uh, McKinstry's home furnishings first and 10 for the Cards. On their own 30, Cotter out of the gun, link the motion man going to the far side. They blow the play dead, and what do we have? Is it delay, or is it too many men? Uh, what do we have here? I was thinking, did they have 12 on the field? Because I saw one of the officials counting. He was counting. And I want to say it was too many men, maybe. Yeah, it's on Baldwin Woodville. I think it's too many men. Yeah, well, yeah I just saw one walk off. Yeah, up. because one 31, just walked off. Yeah. 31 just walked off over there. He right? did. So yeah. that's what well, you don't see that very often. But I saw one of the officials with his finger. He was, he was counting. And so it's too many men on the field. And that's a penalty that's going to give Columbus... Really good field position at the 45-yard line where it'll be a uh, first down there for him. Power plays are not allowed in football. So that's a that's a 15-yard penalty. 15-yard penalty, and uh, it's first and 10 Columbus now at their own 45. All right, here we go. Is Lincoln motion again. Cotter bumbles the snap, picks it back up. Now he's going to run with it. 45, 50, and he's into Blackhawks territory down around the 47-yard line of Baldwin, Woodville, Davis, Paulson, the outside linebacker with the tackle. It's going to be a gain of, oh, I guess about eight. eight. Yeah, we'll call it eight, and it'll be a second and two from the 47-yard line. Columbus might want to think about putting that one in the playbook. Hey, it worked out pretty well. (laughs) Well, I guess it did. Credit Cotter for some quick thinking on his feet. On second and two. Couple receivers to the near side of the field. Now they motion Brunel, and he's going to take that. Nope, it's uh, Cotter on the keeper. He went straight up the middle inside the 40, down near the 37. That's another McKinstry's home furnishings, first and 10 for Columbus as they mark it at the 37 gain of 10. I got I got fooled by the fake there. That's 17 yards on the last two carries by the quarterback. Didn't, I'm not going to stand here and tell you that I told you so, but I told you so. Yeah, you did. Yeah, okay, thanks. All right, first and 10 Cardinals on the Blackhawk 37-yard line. Cotter out of the gun, Link in motion, and Link takes the handoff. He's inside the 35, cut back 30. He's to the 25, and he's down at about the 23-yard line. And that's another first down for Columbus, brought to you by McKinstry's Home Furnishings. Oh, I'll tell you. you, you All marked at the uh, 24. Columbus gets seven on the board here, and that's just sort of like saying a statement. You know, the statement is, hey, those last three minutes of the first half, that's not us. This is us. On first and 10 for the Cardinals from the Baldwin-Woodville 24. They'll put two receivers to the left, hand off Brunel, and he's met near the line of scrimmage, but he stays on his feet, gets down to about the 20, then push back. You got four. Yeah, picked up four or five on the play. There were plenty of white jerseys there. Logan Gordon was there. Jackson Johansson was there. A lot of emails continuing to come in here. This one says, uh, this is Cousin Susie cheering for number three and number eight for Columbus. Go Cards. Keep up the hard work, boys. Thank you, Susie, for that email. That's... uh, Susie from that, uh, checking in on that email. We'll get to some more in a minute. This is second and six. And this Uh-oh. is a keeper in Cotter. Boy, he that was. was a keeper. Yeah, it was a keeper by yep. Cotter, and he didn't get much up the middle that time. Wasn't much happening. Did he get a yard, maybe? Uh, nope, he got nothing. All right, no gain. This email says, hey there, this is uh, Dana Helgeson from Baldwin Woodville. Says, proud of the uh, boys. Keep it up. Go Hawks. Dana, thank you for that email. This is humongous. This is a big, big play to begin this uh, second half drive. Third and six for Columbus at the 21-yard line of Baldwin Woodville. Cotter throwing. That was Uh tipped, and it's incomplete. Somebody got a hand on it. Yeah, that, that one was wide open. They had the guy... Out there, it was intended for uh, Link, I believe. 
Uh, it was about a six, seven, eight yard pass that would have got the first down. Credit the defensive lineman getting his big, big hand up there. This is big play. This is bigger than the last one. It yep, is a it's a and fourth six. and six for Columbus from the 21 yard line of the Blackhawks. We're three minutes into the third quarter, and on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard, it's 27 to 17, Columbus leading Baldwin Woodville. Here they go, fourth and six. Cotter to throw. Across the middle, oh. incomplete off the hands of Riley Knockreiner, and the ball is going to go over on downs wide to Baldwin open. Woodville. He was wide he open. Was he wide could open. not hang on. Well, it was a quarter step behind him. I'm sure that if you, well, you, you, you ask Cotter, he's going to say, hey, I missed through the ball. I was behind my, my intended receiver. The receiver's going to say, I got to make that play, you know? Mm. Another email here. This one says, good luck to the Blackhawks and our grandson, Cal Smith, watching from Dallas, Wisconsin. Greg and Kelly checking in today. I didn't know there was a Dallas, Wisconsin. Oh, there's a penalty. And, uh, That's going to cost them five. Five-yard penalty. Yep, Columbus is clapping. It's a false start on Baldwin Woodville. Now, where is Dallas, Wisconsin? Is that anywhere up near? Uh, Come on, you're the guy the, that's Well, I should know this, but I, but I don't, I guess. I, You know, I, I've been to Dallas. Dallas, Texas, but uh, I can't say that. I no, I'm gonna. You know, that's that's gonna be job one after the broadcast today. Is I got to look up exactly where Dallas, Wisconsin is, because that's one of the few places I don't know. First and fifteen for Baldwin Woodville from their own sixteen, moving left to right, third quarter, and they'll keep it on the ground. And boy, there's just a mass of humanity yeah, off he, the left side of the line. He got about five or six. And on the carry, I'm trying to see that was Smith. That was Smith on the carry. We're going to give him five. And, boy, he had to fight for those five yards. Second and ten coming up. Again, if you want to send us an email, sports at dailydodge.com is where you'll find us. Send me your name, where you're from, who you're cheering for. Second and ten from the 21. And Warner has the snap, looking to throw. Now he's going to run to the left side. Warner, he's to the 20. 25, he's out of bounds. At around the 25, maybe the 26. He got six. So it's going to set up a third down and four for Baldwin Woodville. Mike, we mentioned on the pregame how uh, Werner is such a, a, a an avid uh, rusher. You know, the kid's really good. He's got a lot of yards gained throughout the season. Well, he's been held in check today. Five carries on the ground for only eight yards. So that's uh, something Columbus has done a really, really good job defensively on. Third and five Columbus, or for Baldwin Woodville, rather, on their own 26. Three receivers to the near side. They motion a man. That's Smith. Keeper by Werner. Straight ahead. And he Ooh, is very close short. to the first down, but he let's see. It all short. depends on the spot. I think he might have it. Nope. Nope. He's a foot, good foot short. Oh. And they're, he, did he get it? Or are they going to measure man. I, my first glance, gonna, I thought he had it. Timeout for a measurement. Timeout for an official measurement. So they will, they will measure this. I thought he had it. Tim thought it was short. We're going to find out who wins the battle of will they or won't they here. Battle of the, I've heard battle of the sexes, but never battle never of the battle sexy of guys. That. Yeah, exactly. And Tim, you win this one. He was short by oh, about half a yard or so. You didn't catch that, did you? I heard what you said. Okay, all right. Okay, and we just heard, oh, I just got a text from our rules expert, uh, Bruce Kaufman, oh boy. my brother-in-law, and it's clarification on that. W what we said was earlier was too many men. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clarify that because right. he's a, a football official. He knows it better than we do. It's fourth and less than a yard. They're going to go for it. And this is a oh, keeper. He didn't, he get, didn't it. get it. Not a chance. Warner did not get it. He faked the handoff to Smith. He kept it, but the Columbus defense... Stout up front, and the ball's going to go over on downs to the Cardinals. Mark that one down in your playbook right there, folks. That is huge. A big gamble, very honestly, by the Blackhawks to go for it so deep in their own territory. You know, uh, there was just a, a big uh, pile up in the backfield. Great penetration by the defensive line. Credit the big boys up front for Columbus, who just uh, completely destroyed that one from the get-go. On first and 10, Columbus from the Baldwin, Woodville 29, Brunel. He's to the 30, oh, 25, he could go, 20, 10, 5, 
Touchdown, Columbus! Colton Brunel, his fifth rushing touchdown of the game. And with 7.34 to go in the third quarter, wait a minute, there's uh -oh. a flag down. Hold everything. Me? At the three-yard line? At the three-yard line, oh. there's a flag, and they're discussing this. I, I, I saw it at the last second. And they're still discussing this. It looks like it may be against the uh, Blackhawks, but. Yep. Okay, what is it? Dead ball foul. Dead. Oh, uh, personal foul. Personal foul. Now, now I think I, I could be way wrong on this, but I think that can be enforced on a kickoff. That's probably what they were, what they're going to do. Yes. I think high school is the only place where you have the option to uh, take that on the kickoff. All right, so the touchdown stands. It's Brunel's fifth of the game, a 29-yard scamper. 33-17 to 17 for the moment, and Hines will attempt an extra point. It's up, and it is good. 34-17, Columbus leads Baldwin Woodville on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Back in one minute, Daily Dodge TV in 95.3 WBEV. If a new smile is what you're looking for, we have the answer for you. Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster at Columbus Family Dental, where we specialize in making people smile. We promise to take the time to get to know you so we can provide you with a custom plan to help you achieve the smile of your dreams. Our experienced team looks forward to hearing from you soon. Call us today at 623-5559. Come to Columbus Family Dental. The people here are nice, and I trust them. Ready, set, ergo. The game plan is to make banking convenient for you. Ergo Bank has locations in Marquesan and Fox Lake with interactive teller machines in five different communities. And at all locations, speak with a live teller and conduct most in-branch transactions by transferring, withdrawing, or depositing. That's better banking by design. Open 7A to 7P Monday through Friday, 7 to noon on Saturdays. Call them today at 920-398-2336 or visit ergobank.com. Ergo Bank, an equal housing lender and member FDIC. Pop it up down to about And the we come back. It's now 34-17. Columbus in front of Baldwin Woodville on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Colton Brunel, five rushing touchdowns. Onside and kick. it's an onside kick. And I there's think, a scramble. I, I think Columbus got it. Columbus is. Yep. They've got it. Columbus does an onside kick and recovers. Turnabout is fair play. And I couldn't quite tell who was the one to recover it because there were bodies all over the, the field. But Columbus giving Baldwin Woodville a taste of their own medicine. They do the onside kick and they recover at the 34-yard line of Baldwin Woodville with Need, seven and a half to play third needless quarter. Needless to say, that is a total result of the uh, push in the back down at the three-yard line, Mike. Uh, on the uh, scoring run by Brunel. Right, because they enforced and the penalty. Col Columbus had two options right there. One was the onside kick or pop it up down to about the 10-yard line, mm -hmm. make them return, and keep them down that direction. Well, this one works out a whole lot better. It does. First and 10, Columbus from the Baldwin-Woodville 34-yard line. It's McKinstry's home furnishings for Sam Brunel. He's the 35-30, 25, oh. 20, and he, oh, he almost busted that one. 14 he on that one. He almost busted that one. Another Cardinal first down. All right, I mentioned that I got that text from uh, Bruce Goffman. Yes. It was not too many men on the field. They called illegal participation. It's a 15-yard penalty okay. instead of a substitution infraction, which is only five yards. Okay? Oh, and Bruce also says Dallas is northwest of Bloomer, southwest of Cameron, just east of Prairie Farm. Oh, now, Bruce, sure. Bruce, I know exactly I know, where that is. I know exactly. We've got a timeout called by <laughs> the Blackhawks, brought to you by Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Let our family take care of your family. Here's the funny part. I know I've been to Bloomer. I've been to Cameron. I've been to Prairie Farm. I, I know where all those places are. I didn't realize Dallas was in the middle of it. So now I know. Let's get to some more emails while we have a timeout here. Uh, let's see what we got. This one says, hi, it's Matt. Uh, tell Tim it's a pleasure to hear his commentary. Uh, tell him to lay off Scott's fries for lunch and stick to soup. Laugh out loud. What does that mean? Matt. 
Ooh, I think tell, I know who tell that Justin is. it's good that he does. Uh, r- the, he does. I know who that is. It's a good thing he does radio with that long hair, is what he said. That's Matt, from Matt, Matt. Last name uh, begins with a G. Yes, it does. Yes. I, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. This one says should be. This one says an exciting game with two fantastic running backs, Columbus's Brunel and Ellsworth's uh, Bo Hines. It says here. It says high scoring. That's Al from Ellsworth checking in today. Okay, so he's saying that. Okay, so if Columbus would hang on to win, he's saying should be an exciting game. Now, well, we're not quite there yet, but uh, Al, uh, thank you very much for the email. He's saying that, yeah, Brunel would go up against Ellsworth's Bo Hines next week if Columbus hangs on, but we'll see what happens there. Uh, let's see, this email. Hey, guys, watching Baldwin Woodville versus Columbus from Reno, Nevada. That's from Mike and Janet Pozarski. Go Blackhawks. Wow, thanks for the email, folks. Again, sports at dailydodge.com is where you'll find us. I'll get to some more in a moment. First and 10, Blackhawk, or I should say Columbus Whoa. on the 20, and that's Brunel spinning inside the 15 <laughs> down to about the 14. Well, picks up about six on the play. This email says, excellent job on the radio, Mike and Haldy. Not only is he the best basketball official, he can do play-by-play. That's from, uh, it says, is that Shaney? Um, Shoney? Shaney? Shaney. Shaney. Yeah, From Shaney. Columbus? There we go. Shaney. Yep. All right. Checking in Thanks, on that Shaney. one. Thanks, Shaney. Appreciate the kindness. I've been fooling you for years. And the give. Is, nope, it's a keeper. Cotter, 15, left side, and he's out of bounds near the 11 yard line. Cotter with the keeper. Okay, and an overnight Bonnie also checked in. He says, Mike, Dallas is a small village in Barron County. Well, Thank you very much, Overnight, for uh, thinking of me there, and Bruce, too, because he helped me. Now I know where Dallas, Wisconsin is, and now I can sleep better tonight. <laughs> and next time I get up to Barron County, I'm going to have to pay a visit to Dallas. Uh, let's see. This email says, rooting for Nathan Cotter from Bullhead City, Arizona, the Toby Cotter family checking in today. And they say, great announcing, by the way, very professional Toby, thank you. I don't know what game you're listening to, though. <laughs> Here is, Ooh, thank you. That, that's a very nice compliment. Yeah, down to the four-yard line Brunel, goes Brunel. Colton Brunel. Thank you very much. No, we do appreciate that. And a McKinstry's Home Furnishings first down for Columbus. It's a first and goal for the Cardinals from the four-yard line. 6-15 and counting left in the third quarter, 34-17. Columbus leads at the moment. They're looking to add to that lead right here. Brunel in the backfield, Cotter out of the gun. First and goal from the four for the Cardinals. Brunel takes the handoff, and he is just Just shy of the goal line, tackled at the one. Second and goal coming up from there. Brunel with the run on the right side, tackled by Heimer. Second and goal. The ball at the one-yard line. It'll be second and goal for Columbus. 168 yards on 21 carries for Colton Brunel thus far. Matches That 21 matches the number on his uniform. Cotter takes the snap, gives it to Brunel. No, he's going to take it himself. Yep, touchdown. Dives, touchdown, Columbus. Nathan Cotter faked the handoff, and he dove for the touchdown. A one-yard plunge for Cotter, and with 5.16 to go in the third quarter, it is now 40-17 to in favor of Columbus on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Five TDs for Brunel, one for uh, Cotter, and that prevented the double hat trick. It did. For Colton Brunel. Hines to try an extra point. Kick is up. Kick is good. 41-17, Columbus leads. We'll take a one-minute break. We're back in one minute. Daily Dodge TV and 95.3 WBEV. Your Dare to Dream team at EXP Realty cheers on the Columbus Cardinals in the playoffs. Linda and her dream team, daughter Ember and son Eric at EXP Realty, have been proudly serving your real estate needs for over 25 years in our community. They'll help you navigate through all of your real estate needs, making your dreams come true. Visit them online at daretodreamproperties.com. Your Dare to Dream team, proud supporters of the Columbus Cardinals. 
If you ask a community member what comes to mind when they think Farmers and Merchants Union Bank, chances are they'll say our commitment to our community. And that's why we're proud to cheer on our Columbus Cardinal football team. Farmers and Merchants Union Bank has been proud to offer the latest in banking technology and great customer service for generations. Check us out today at fmub.bank or step into one of our six convenient locations. And go Cardinals! Farmers and Merchants Union Bank, member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. And Heinz's kick will be fielded just shy of the 10 yard line. Smith to the 15, 20, 25. He's out across the 30 yard line before being tackled at around the 31 yard line. Smith on the return. But right now, with 5.09 to go, third quarter, on the John Deere Horicon Work Scoreboard, it is 41 to 17. Columbus leading Baldwin Woodville. It's a first down and 10. A McKinstry's Home Furnishings first down for the Blackhawks. Emails continue to keep rolling in here. We're going to get to those as we go along. Sports at DailyDodge.com if you want to send one in. Low snap, dugout, handoff, and I believe that's Smith. No, beg your pardon. It was Logan Gordon. Gordon on the carry that time. Nothing. No gain. No, no gain, gain no. on the play. This email says, uh, keep pushing Blackhawks. Cheering from Baldwin. A shout out to number 84 in the cheer squad for Baldwin. And that's from uh, Joe and Kylie Fisher. And it says, uh, the hog pen bar and grill. Must be a whole gang there watching the game. On second and 10, Warner being chased out of the pocket, rolling to the near side, throws, oh. batted down. Wow. Batted down by Jefferson Mowbray. The pass was intended for Colton Hush, and Mowbray swatted it down. So it's going to bring up third and 10. But, yeah, I bet you they're having a nice uh, afternoon watching the game at the Hog Pen. Sounds like a fun place I, to I be. I hope they have an outside patio. Well, it would be a great day to be out there, wouldn't it? probably 60 degrees up there, too. Well, you know, yeah, probably is. It, it's, it's very nice here in south central Wisconsin today. There is today. not a cloud in the there sky, is not. folks. Third and 10. Blackhawks on their own 31. Warner pump fake. Now running to the left side. Throws. It is incomplete. He threw it out of bounds. Intended receiver was Sean Van Someren, but it's a now it's a flag down. There was a flag on the play, and I believe it was such a they they signal so fast. It looks like it was a hold. I think they're going to decline it here if Columbus, if I'm reading that right. Holding decline. It's declined. Okay, so fourth down coming up. Just got another email here, Tim. It says, if you visit Dallas, that's Dallas, Wisconsin, bring your golf clubs. They have a real short but really nice nine-hole course. Leave your driver at home. That's from uh, Charlie from Baldwin checking in. Charlie, I, I just might do that. I'm going oh. to I'm gonna get up to Dallas. Hey. I'm going to play that nine-hole course. Day trip, you and me next summer. Let's do it. Yeah, let's take how, a day trip. How far are they from Troy Byrne, which is just outside of Hudson? How far is that? Probably not too far. All right. Be? Hour, hour and a half maybe. That's a great course. Here's the punt, and Link will field it at the oh 29. Boy. He's going to stiff arm a man, 35, near sideline 40, 45, and he's tackled near the Columbus bench, right near the midfield stripe, brought down by Jackson Johansson. And Soren's punt returned from Link. Yeah, we'll have to take a day trip up that way. That'd be kind of fun. This email says, Joe Zander was the most valuable lineman to ever come out of St. Jerome's Catholic School, <laughs> and then Colin Selk was born, relegated to second tier once again. That's from Matt checking in today. Oh, my goodness. These are fun. It's, it's fun, to, fun to interact with you folks out there. First How about and Seltzner? Ten. How about Seltzner? Did First he go and to ten. St. Jerome's? I don't know. First and 10 from the 50 for Columbus. Hand up Brunel. He's inside the 45. Inside oh. the 40 breaks a tackle and down to the 37 yard line as he was dragging the defender Hush with him. It's another McKinstry's home furnishings. First down and 10 for Columbus. What do we got here? Okay, an update from, uh, from uh, Wisconsin Rapids. Tucker McGee took 55th out of 151 at the state cross country meet. So congratulations to Tucker. That's D2, okay, Columbus is D2. Okay. 
Congratulations. And he's what? He's the only runner ever? Second runner. Second runner. Thank you. All right, first and 10 from the 37, and that is Brunel again running off the left side of the line, out of bounds on the near side of the field. Got another eight. We got him at 188 yards. Pardon me, 189 yards on 23 carries. And he second and two coming up for I'll the tell Cardinals. You what, Colton and Brunel is starting to starting to run like he's been in uh, one heck of a football game. Uh, I'm, what I mean is he's taking a bunch of hits. Yes, yes, he has. Things just uh, don't look as free as easy, free and easy as it was early in the ball game. Second and two, Cardinals in the Blackhawk twenty nine handoff. Brunel right side, big hole inside the tw tw uh, twenty, inside the. 20 to about the, maybe the 16. There was a huge gaping hole there momentarily. Flag down. Yep, this one's coming back. And I think, yep, that they're going to back up Columbus here as they're walking the other way. R.J. Gross is pleading his case to the uh, gentleman in the white hat out there. But, R.J., you're going to lose that one, pal. Just got an email here. This one says, uh, Colin Shepard would like to say oh hello. And goodness. go Cards. Keep going. We're all with you. He's uh, Colin from the 1990. Oh, that is a blast from the past. Squad that won the state championship oh here goodness. in Columbus. Outside linebacker. Oh, man. And uh, he's uh, he mentioned you. and He has Haldy and Seabus in the email oh there. Colin goodness. Shepard. Thank Golly. you for the email, Colin. We're going to start hooking up with some of these people, you know? Man. These are blasts from the past. Third and as it was second down and 17. Link takes the handoff. Right side, 45, cut back. Pushes his way towards the 40, and he gets dropped at around the 40-yard line. Got about four. Seventeen yards gained on two carries for Link on that exact same play. 3-10 and counting left in the uh, third quarter. This email says, the title of the email is The Kick. It says, for Davis Paulson, congrats from Grandma and Grandpa Davis from the Villages, Florida. Wish your team all oh, the best. Man. How about that? That was a heck of a kick, Grandma and Grandpa. Whew. That was a heck of a kick. One of the best I've ever seen on third and 14. Cotter, pass was oh. tipped. Somebody got a hand on it. It's incomplete. As he was trying to go near side to Brady Link. And this one, uh, this email says, Go Cards, can't wait to see the basketball team. And Coach Downing make a run as well. That's from Joe. Joe checking in on the broadcast. Again, sports at dailydodge.com is where you'll find us. Sports at dailydodge.com. Send me your name, where you're from, who you're cheering for. And uh, if you know of any good golf courses in the greater Dallas, Wisconsin area, we'd like to hear from you. <laughs> All right, it's 4th and 14 for Columbus. And timeout, Columbus. timeout has been called. Timeout, this timeout Columbus. brought to you by the good folks at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Let our family take care of your family. Our game today brought to you by our presenting video sponsors, Columbus Family Dental and Hometown Glass and Improvement. Today's game also brought to you by John Deere Horicon Works, Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Lamers Bus Lines, Farmers and Merchants Union Bank, Prairie Ridge Health, your Dare to Dream team at EXP Realty, Kestrel Ridge Golf Course, Cardinal Lanes in Columbus, Ergo Bank, Columbus Country Club, Surefire, Richards Insurance, Bayside Supper Club, Landmark Credit Union, Preferred Dental Partners, Air Care, Metalcraft of Mayville, Slumberland, Kraft Heinz, Great Harvest Bread Company, and Jerry's Automotive. Mike Trons and Tim Haldeman with you at Fireman's Park in Columbus. Right next door to Columbus High School, we've got Kyra engineering our radio broadcast today back at the 95.3 studios. Justin and Alex are our on-site videographer slash engineers for this Daily Dodge TV video stream that you're enjoying today. All right, as we come back to live action, fourth and 14 for Columbus from the Baldwin-Woodville 41. They're going to punt it. Braxton Knockreiner's punt is in the air, high floater. It's going to bounce inside the five and out of bounds. Boy, that's a great punt. Coffin that corner. That is a great, the coffin corner punt. You are right. Right at the five-yard line. Well done hey, by Knockreiner. This just in from uh, Marlon Hensler, the uh, longtime PA guy, and, uh, of course, he's the cross-country coach here in Columbus. But uh, Tucker McGee 
55th in the state, Division Two. Did you say that one already? 55th oh, out of 151 in Division Two at yes. state, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Congratulations to him. I Only the second runner from Columbus to make it to the state cross-country meet. That's fantastic. That is, that is well done, my friend. Well done, Tucker. All right, first and 10 for Baldwin-Woodville from their own six. Werner in his own end zone, looking to throw. He's going to throw to the left side. It is caught oh. on the sideline and out to the 27-yard line is Van Someren. Sean Van Someren with the catch. And, boy, that is, that's big for Baldwin-Woodville as it gets them out of the shadow of their own goalpost a little bit. They're going to mark the ball at the 28, so that's a gain of 22 on that pass play, and it gets them some breathing room. And that play is blown dead. It looks like a false start going to be called here on Baldwin Woodville, and that is the case. Five-yard penalty on the Blackhawks. Well, we had that email earlier, Tim, from the Hog Pen Bar and Grill. Now I've got an email. This one says, Strikers Bar in Baldwin is packed, and they're cheering on our boys. Go Hawks. So, hey, to the gang at Strikers Bar today, thanks for checking in. We appreciate what it. What do you think? Par three golf, and then we go and then visit we go to both of those both places. Both of those places, yes. yes. But, but they have to uh, somehow or another give us a little free entrance into the place. Well, there's no cover charge, no, I'm sure. Are you sure? All right. <laughs> I wouldn't think so on not the, the place, next play. Not the places I go. No. <laughs> What's going on here? All right. On the keeper that time was Werner. And Werner. Let's see where they mark it here. They're going to mark this. Oh, he lost yardage. He lost about two yards back to the 26. I beg your pardon. He, he gained three because there was the penalty. I was thinking that was, yeah, there we go. I'll get it right. Anyways, Werner now dancing, buying time, finally throws incomplete. And now a flag comes out at the end of the play. The pass is intended for Coonan. That was Lincoln coverage and... Werner did a lot of dancing back behind the line of scrimmage, trying to buy time and extend the play and tried to find Kuhn and couldn't connect with him, but now there's flags everywhere. There could be an illegal man downfield. Uh, that's what I'm calling. Multiple flags on the field. Oh, there's flags. Yeah, more. there's they're everywhere. <laughs> there We're just trying to sort this out. There's been an inordinate amount of flags today. There's been an awful lot of penalties. Well, this game, I mean, it's already over two hours old now. We're not even to the uh, fourth quarter. Holding. Columbus is refused. Columbus pass interference. Oh. All right, so pass Columbus. interference was declined. Did I get that? Yeah. No, they accepted. The, okay, the holding penalty was declined. Well, the holding the was pass declined. Interference pass interference was accepted. Yards. There you go. That's an extra point. We'll get it right. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna need a little strikers and hog pen bar and grill here after this game, Tim. It's mine's been a long just, one. Mine's just down the street. Yeah, I know yours. <laughs> your your watering holes down the street. All right, on first and ten. This is a run that's not gonna go much of anywhere. That Smith, the delayed draw, and he lost yardage. He did not even get back to the line of scrimmage. Loss of one, second and eleven coming up for Baldwin Woodville from their own forty. And we've got an injury. Oh, looks like getting, they're 41. Oh, that's an ankle. Yeah, that's an ankle injury there, looks like, yep. as uh, Elijah Heimer is walking off the field un under his own power, a little gingerly. but This email says, excellent game broadcast. He says, keep up the good work. Go Baldwin Woodville from uh, Jeff. Jeff sending me that email today. Well, we want all those Baldwin Woodville people next week Called, you know, writing back to us. Absolutely. When uh, Columbus Absolutely. takes on Ellsworth. We would, uh, we would enjoy that. All right. This is Werner to throw. Caught by Smith. <laughs> and he is immediately dropped by Aaron Eckern. Aaron Eckern fought through a blocker and made the play. Folks, you, you got lucky if you saw it on Daily Dodge because it was right down in front of us. And, and the blocker did a good job, but Eckern just overpowered him. Overpowered him. Yep, that's, that's exactly yeah. it. See, I had a, a discussion with Dad earlier tonight, today, before the ball game, 
and uh, he told me he was ready to go. He was refreshed after uh, having been out for a week. And Loss he of was six, by the way. Loss of six, third and 17 for Baldwin Woodville from their own 36. Back to throw Werner. Pressure coming, and he is sacked. Jefferson Mowbray sacks Werner. And it's fourth in a country mile for Baldwin Woodville with 29 seconds remaining in the third quarter. On the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard, it remains Columbus 41 and Baldwin Woodville 17. And guess what? We're going to see the end of the third quarter here in about 14 seconds. That may have been the longest quarter of uh, football high school history. I just texted my wife, said, don't plan on me for dinner tonight. <laughs> You going down the street to the same place I'm going? Probably. Okay. All right, that's the end of the third quarter with our score at the end of three. Columbus 41 and Baldwin Woodville 17. We're back in one minute. One minute break on 95.3 WBEV and Daily Dodge TV. What's in your kid's lunchbox today? Turkey and bacon on honey whole wheat? Roast beef on sourdough? PB&J on cinnamon chip with bananas? That is bananas, but that's what fresh baked breads from Great Harvest can do for you. Unleash your sandwich ingenuity. So show your kids some lunchbox love with chicken salad on cranberry orange bread, Italian on cheddar garlic bread. Then show everyone your creation at Instagram or Facebook using this hashtag, Great Harvest Bread, the way it ought to be. Is it time to update the bathroom? Then it's time to head to Hometown Glass and Improvement of Beaver Dam. Hometown has a full complement of Vasco shower enclosures. Hometown Glass makes your selection of enclosures easy, and they provide hassle-free installation. When you purchase a Basco shower enclosure, your expectations will be exceeded. Hometown Glass promises you a classy, elegant, and luxurious centerpiece for your bathroom. Hometown Glass and Improvement, Highway 33 East of Beaver Dam, on the web at hometownglass.com. Now we start the fourth quarter with Columbus leading Baldwin Woodville in this Division Four Level Two playoff game, 41 to 17. The Cardinals on top of the Blackhawks, and as we start the fourth quarter, it's a fourth down and 30 for the Blackhawks. They have to punt it away, and here is the punt by Sean Van Someren, and it will go out of bounds. It hits the stripes. Yeah. Hey, uh, this is we got we got to mention this, folks. Today, our head referee, Cliff Thompson, this is his last game after officiating high school football for the last 50 years. Cliff Thompson, he's the head referee today. He's this from, is his final he's from, game. He's from Blair, by the way. Yep, and he is retiring after 50 years of officiating high school football. He's a U.S. veteran. He's refereed three generations of families. And congratulations to Cliff Thompson who is, yeah, we talked to him in the booth before the game. He's yep. from Blair, Wisconsin. I know where Blair is. I've been to Blair. And uh, right down the road from Taylor. First and 10, Columbus from their own 41. Uh -oh. That pass is batted up in the air and out of bounds incomplete. We've had a lot of tip balls in this game today. But Cotter's pass is incomplete, second and 10. You know what? That's, that's just remarkable. And Cliff, thank you so much for what you've done for so many years. Uh, we need more people like Cliff Thompson, and we need him in a bad way. Yeah, and in a real hurry. In a hurry. Yes, we do. Congratulations to him. By the way, I uh, was breaking in my uh, my new uh, young lady uh, referee this morning. All right. Did two games with my friend Alyssa. Everything go well? She did an absolutely great job and look forward to working with her again. Second and 10, Columbus from their own 41, moving left to right fourth quarter. Handoff, this is, guess who, Brunel. He's going to be dropped for a loss. How about that play by Ryan Vienendahl? He's a cornerback, and he made a fine play on Brunel, drops him for a loss. In fact, this is a loss of uh, almost six. six yards. Yeah, it's going to be third and 16 coming up. By the way, Tim, uh, we just got an email here that says, this is from Kelly, um, Pinecrest Golf Course in Dallas, Sioux Creek Golf Course in Chatek are both great nine-hole courses. Kelly, thank you. We're going to have to get up there and play some of those courses. Tim and I play a lot of golf together when we can, and we have a – Brunel's down. Oh, my goodness. I didn't see that. I, I knew there was an injury, but they're tending to Colton Brunel. Oh, boy. So we have a – 
timeout here to tend to the injured player. Now he's up. Oh, my goodness. That is. I, I didn't realize that he was down because I couldn't see him. He was right in front of the bench. And if I have, have any uh, in inkling here, he's got to be done for the day. Looks like he's going to – I'm looking through the binoculars. He's, it looks like he's okay, but I wonder if we're going to see him the rest of the day. I, after that scare, my goodness. Um, we may have to call in 911 right here to start a few hearts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's I've, a few Columbus fans that uh, they all were, of a sudden yeah, uh, exactly. going like, oh, boy. All right, third and 16 for Columbus from their own 36. Cotter out of the gun, has the snap, looking to throw, rolling to the left. Now he's going to throw off his back foot. It is incomplete oh, great at the 50-yard line intended for Link. He tried to make a leaping grab, could not, and Vienendahl was out there in coverage once again. Very honestly, I'm just a little surprised by the uh, passing attempts here on that series, Mike. You know, uh, just if you run the football for three plays and you go three and out, you're going to run, uh, you know, two to two and a half minutes off the clock, and the clock is your ally at this point up 41-17 with just over 11 minutes remaining. But instead, you got a couple of uh, incomplete passes that uh, kills the clock. All right, on a fourth and 16, Columbus will have to punt it away. And this Ooh. one straight up in the air. Boy, not a very long punt. And it's going to oh. take a Columbus bounce, though, and go down inside the 30 to about the 26 or so. So, well, you don't get style points, but... 35 net. Yeah, 35 net. So that's uh, I guess that's pretty the way good it ends. You look at it. But uh, I wanted to thank Kelly again for uh, recommending those golf courses in Dallas and Chatech. And this one says we have a number of good golf courses in Rome, Wisconsin, too. That's from uh, from Steve and Marianne. Steve there's Gates and Marianne. There's got to be two Romes because there's a Rome in Jefferson County also. Okay. Well, all right. Is one like a village and one a township, I or I don't no I don't know exactly, but I'm just asking. First and ten. On the 27 for the Blackhawks, this is... Ouch. Oh, boy, what a, leveled. what a hit. Jefferson Mowbray oh, just leveled the ball carrier, Vienendahl, who was going to the right side and drops him for a loss of a couple of yards. It'll be second and 13 back at around the 24-yard line. Boy, there's been some big hitting in this game. These are hey, these guys are they're playing hard. They're hitting hard. Uh, again, if you want to sneak an email in before the end of the game, sports at dailydodge.com. We'll take your name, where you're from, who you're cheering for, what golf courses you like to play, <laughs> sports at dailydodge.com. And on second and 13, handoff straight ahead. This is Gordon. He gets stood up after a gain of a couple. He just went right into a sea of red and got stood up, and they blew the play dead. Picked up four yards on the play, third and nine coming up. My name is Mike Tronson. His name is Tim Haldeman. We're glad you're with us today on Daily Dodge TV and 95.3 WBEV. What are we at for viewership right now there, Ninja? As the 3,900. Oh, my goodness. Here is Warner running to the right side throws, and it's incomplete on the far sideline intended for Coonan with coverage out there by... Jefferson Mowbray, did you you said 3,900 3, yeah. 3, devices today? That is fantastic. And as uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you happen to be uh, a first timer, new to Daily Dodge TV, welcome. Come back and see us more often. We'd love to love to hear from you again. Sports at DailyDodge.com. It is fourth and nine for Baldwin Woodville from their own 28. So a punting situation here. Van Someren back to punt. Gets the high floater nice. off. Nice punt. Fair catch. catch signaled by Link at his 34-yard line. And that's where Columbus will take over with the McKinstry's home furnishings. First down and 10. Level three of the postseason is next weekend. And Columbus would be hosting Ellsworth in that level three matchup next week. Now, will it be Friday? Will it be Saturday? Because here's the problem. Ellsworth is not that far. It's only a couple of miles south of Baldwin, and so they have a four-hour ride to get here. So, you know, there's a good chance they could move that game from Friday to Saturday next week. <sighs> but we'll, we'll wait and see. That means the Badgers are going to have to win well, without. They're going to have to, exactly. 
And here's a handoff to Brunel. He's back in there on first. And I'm shocked he's in there. Oh my as goodness. he gets to the 40-yard line, gain of six. And it'll set up a second and four for the Cardinals. I mean, with, with 9.23 and counting left in the game, you're up 41-17. On the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard, I'm a little surprised well, he's still out I, there. I got him for 25 carries for 88 yard for 188 yards, and last week he only carried I want to say 16 times. You know, didn't uh, didn't really need him last week when you score over 60 points in a game. It's true. Second and four, Columbus from their own 40. Cotter, hands off. This Roach, Connor Roach on the carry. He's got a first down on across the 45 to about the 47. I was wondering if they might put Connor Roach in. I would hope so. The kid's good. He is. He's, He's very good. And he just picked up a fresh set of downs. A McKinstry's home furnishings first down for the Cardinals with 844 and counting left in the game. Right now the ball spotted at the 47 of Columbus. Hey, we had the left Roaches right. uh, holler at us last week from Arizona. That's right, we did, didn't we? Come on, folks. we got to hear from you again. Cotter out of the gun, takes the snap, gives it to Roach, and this time he's going to get tripped up near the line of scrimmage, and that was Coonan. Eli Coonan made the nice shoestring tackle there. No gain. I uh, couldn't have asked for a nicer day to be out here for this high school football playoff game. These these types of days, my friends, are fleeting. So you've got to enjoy them while they're here. And uh, man, this is this is this is about as good as it gets. Second and ten. The give. Oh Whoa. boy, that what Who's happened got there? The football? Who's guy had the ball is out. Does. Roach. Nobody does. Yeah, Roach and Connor. And yeah, Baldwin Woodville yeah. says they recovered, but the there was a uh, a muffed exchange. The ref referees have not signaled. Oh yeah, it's uh, is it? Oh they, oh, they have. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now they do. Now the we get the signal from Cliff Thompson, our referee. It was recovered by Isaac Grass, six foot, three hundred pound senior. And so the muffed exchange. Cotter had trouble with the exchange. Uh, so did. Uh, so did Roach, and it pops out. Grass is there to pick it up, Mike, and now it's first and it, 10, Baldwin-Woodville on the Columbus 46. It just 46. goes to show how important practice is. Oh, absolutely. I mean, man, when that mesh doesn't work, when you're not with the same player like Brunella has been with them all the um, Fake time. Warner, he's going to launch it down the near sideline. Intercepted! That's Link near the 15 to the 20, 25, 30. He's to the middle of the field. Oh, Here's Link. He's to the 40, 45. <laughs> Finally tackled at around the 46-yard line. There's a case of the safety doing the job, playing center field back there, and once again, just reading the square out and go, which uh, the Blackhawks have ran numerous times in this ball game today, and and uh, Link back there just playing center field, read the eyes of the quarterback beautifully, came over, made the great uh, interception, and. Uh, had him sell some green grass for a while, but uh, sort of ran out of gra ran out of gas over there a little bit, and uh, nice return all the way out to the 47-yard line. All righty, that was Colin Fritz that finally tackled Link on that play. First and ten, Columbus from their own 47. Balls on the far hash. Cotter out of the gun will give it to Roach. 50. He's to the 45. Oh, he's baby. to the 40. Right sideline 30, and he's finally tackled inside the 30. Finally brought down by Dylan Vienendahl, but Roach all the way down to the 26-yard line of Baldwin-Woodville. We mentioned he's good. 27 yards. 7-11 to go in the ballgame on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. 41-17, Columbus leads Baldwin-Woodville. It's a McKinstry's home furnishings first down for the Cardinals. Not quite the average today for uh, Connor Roach. He's got... Uh, 34 yards on three carries. Last week, he had uh, three carries for 151 and a couple of touchdowns. Another give to Roach inside the 20-yard line to about the 19. Roach over right guard. They're going to mark it at the 19. That's a pretty nice pickup of seven yards on that play. Second and three coming up as we are approaching the halfway point of the fourth quarter. 
Clock running 626 and counting left in this one. Columbus just trying to finish this one off and punch their ticket to level three for a, a game with Ellsworth next week. Another town I'm very familiar with in West Central Wisconsin. And here's a handoff to Roach. Straight ahead. He's inside the 50. Then he gets pushed back. Oh, he's Roach fresh. But he got a first down. Got another another McKinstry's home furnishings first and ten. First down. Yeah, this I tell you, last week, this week, and then looks like next week, it's like old home week for me uh, with Columbus playing all these teams from my old stomping grounds up there and the west central part of you the know. state. You know, I, again, I worked for Channel 13 for a couple of years, and there wasn't probably too many towns other than Dallas that I didn't get to in those years uh, working for Channel 13 and being a photographer for, for all the sporting events up there. If I didn't know any better, I'd think you were a geography major. I should have been. I, I could have been a cartographer, you know, map maker. Here's a handoff to Roach, and he's tackled just shy of the 10-yard line. You know what? If I wasn't doing all the stuff I'm doing now, that would be a career I would consider. I'd be a cartographer. <laughs> I'd be a map maker. I knew that, Mike. Yeah. You did? Yes, I did. I, I wasn't know, quite I, sure, I, so that's why. I, I know a cartographer. Okay, I, yes. I wasn't quite sure. One of our clients is a, a cartographer, yes. Just over five minutes left in the ball game. It's going to be second and eight for Columbus from the 11-yard line of Baldwin-Woodville. Cotter out of the gun. Roach standing behind in the lone setback. Couple receivers to the left. Hand off Roach. He's to the 10. Sp kind of spinning his way towards the 5 and then gets pushed backwards. Roach up the middle. Got another 5. Yeah, looks like it. Close to it anyways. Ball is inside the 10. Third and 2. Third and about 2. Columbus just taking their time here. 4.23 and counting left in the game. They lead it 41-17 on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Third and two. Keeper, Cotter oh. to the five, dives Cotter. to the pylon. He is in, touchdown Columbus. Cotter on the keeper, six yards to pay dirt. 47 to 17, Columbus with 357 left. Well, you just keep lulling, lulling them to sleep with the dive up the middle. As I get a uh, high five here from uh, Foxy as I made the call at halftime, and the fact that uh, I just felt that Nathan Cotter should hang on to the ball a few more times. He has, uh, in this second half, he's got seven carries for uh, 37 yards and a couple scores. So, uh, you know, that all that stuff adds up. Hines' extra point is good. 48-17, Columbus. We're back in one minute. Daily Dodge TV and 95.3 WBEV. Jerry's Automotive in Beaverdam is a champion of our local schools. Team up with Jerry's Automotive by pumping your gas at their spirit pump, where two cents of every gallon is donated to a local school each month. Jerry's Automotive also provides exceptional vehicle service and repairs and a great selection of convenience items. Visit Jerry's Automotive Center WI.com and on Facebook. Jerry's Automotive, 700 North Spring Street in Beaverdam, across the street from Beaverdam Food Pride. Kestrel Ridge Golf Course is cheering for the Columbus Cardinals on their journey through the postseason. Take advantage of fall rates and great course conditions by reserving your tee time online at KestrelRidgeGolf.com. Stop in for their fantastic Friday fish fry and dining specials. Kestrel Ridge also offers a beautiful event setting for your upcoming holiday party, wedding, or private event. Call to book your event today and check out KestrelRidgeGolf.com for more specials and information. All right, just under four minutes left in this game, and on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard, it is now Columbus 48 and Baldwin-Woodville 17. So Columbus and Ellsworth next week, level three here in Columbus. Will it be Friday night? Will it be Saturday? 
No matter when it is, will you be with us on Daily Dodge TV and 95.3 WBEV? Whoa. And boy, the, a squib was it a squibber or an onside uh, kick? Not really an onside kick, was it? Just a squibber. Yeah. And it was fielded by one of the uh, up men that was uh, Brighton Logterman, who uh, recovered that. Got a couple of emails to get to here before the end of the game. Uh, they were still coming in. Uh, this one says, turn up the heat. Baldwin Woodville dance team checking in. How about that? And, uh, hey, thanks for uh, for the shout-out. We appreciate I, that. I will tell you this. I did see the cheerleaders across the way. Okay. And uh, tell you what, pretty snazzy, all right? All right. Even from, uh, you know, some probably what? That's about 85 yards away. First and that's 10, Blackhawks on their own 46. They'll keep it on the ground. Straight ahead running up to the 50 and now to the 49 of Columbus. And on the carry, I'm just trying to see. I think that was Gordon. It was Gordon, Gordon on, the on the carry that time. This email says, watching from home, cheering for Columbus and hoping to uh, see my favorite freshman play, Landon Schultz in Jack Town. That's from Renee. Renee with that email today. They go hurry up offense, handoff. This is Hush on the right side, 50, and gets to about the 46 of Columbus before he's taken down there. Another email here. It says, uh, what does this one say here? Um, I haven't seen breakaway speed like Colton Brunel since watching Joe Zander chase after an ice cream truck. <laughs> watching from DeForest go cards from Nick Zander. <laughs> I think there's a story behind that. There's a story somewhere. <laughs> Foxy, you know anything about this? By, by the oh, way, yeah. by the way, I'll take uh, I'll take the uh, chocolate vanilla swirl. By the way, <laughs> all right, third and about three for the Blackhawks on the Columbus 47. Two receivers to each side out of the gun. Warner, he's got the ball. Throws, caught. That's Van Someren. He's at the 41. Uh -oh. Fumbles the football. He fell on it, though. He got it back. So it's still Baldwin-Woodville football. But we're down to 235 and counting left in the game. And Columbus ahead 48-17. to 17. One more email coming in here that says, uh, you two announcers are doing a fantastic job. Well, thank you very we much. We got them fooled again. We do. Let's go, Cardinals. <laughs> And uh, this is from Columbus Cardinals number one fan. It says, let's keep building. So proud of our coaches from Cheryl. Cheryl checking in today. Thank is you very much, Is that the gal Cheryl. that takes the tickets down the way here? I'll bet is you. It? I'll bet you it is. Here's Warner to throw on fourth down. Ooh, Caught nice. across the middle. Inside the 30, down to the 25. That's Fritz. And he's tackled finally at the 24-yard line, but a big gainer and a first down for the Blackhawks. Down to two minutes left in the game. And they're playing hard to the end. I wouldn't expect anything else, Mike. This is a well-coached club. Oh, absolutely. Dan Keeper has done a great, great athletes, job. And great athletes out there, man. They do. They have. They're, they it's just, a fine, uh, fine program. They just ran into a buzzsaw with this group of uh, kids from Columbus. Dan they're, Kiefer, he's been around a long time, the head coach of uh, Baldwin-Woodville. He, here's a play action. This is Warner throwing to the end zone. Intercepted. Intercepted. Flag on the play. Intercepted by Riley Knockreiner, intended for Coonan. There is a flag down. I don't. Where's the flag, Mike? There's a flag in the end zone. Yeah, it's in the end zone. Yeah. Okay, it sure wasn't on the uh, on the defense. Oh, you got to be. Kidding. Wow, they called a pass interference. I'm oh, my surprised goodness. there. Okay. Fair enough. So this is not a spot foul. This is not the NFL. It'll be uh, half the distance. It's going to go down to the, to the 12 and a half. We'll see how close I come. There isn't such a thing as a 12 and a half yard line. Did you know that? It's down to the 12. Close enough. By the way, um, Davis Paulson's um, grandparents said, I'll talk about this in a second. Here's. Warner to throw, and it is caught, caught by Coonan oh my goodness. at the five. He oh. had two defenders hassling him. How did he come up with that football? Down he was pushed two. back. That's incredible. With a minute 20 and counting left in the game, it was a first down and 10 from the 12. Now it's second and one after a gain of nine from the three-yard line. It looked like a volleyball match. Incredible. Huh. Here is Warner giving it to... Logan Gordon, he's in. Touchdown, Baldwin Woodville. So Gordon takes it in from three yards out, and with a minute three seconds left in the fourth quarter, it's now 48-23 Columbus.
playing hard to the end, as we said. And now they'll attempt the extra point. This uh, Paulson, Paulson kid is a uh, senior. I wonder if... Uh, Paulson's this. kick is up, and it is good. 48-24. Let's do this. Let's take a one-minute break. Back in one minute, Daily Dodge TV and 95.3 WBEV. Hi, my name is Michelle, and I'm the plant manager for the Beaver Dam Kraft Heinz plant. I'm excited to share with you that we are rolling out new schedules to allow people more time with their families. Come meet me and my team and let us tell you about the exciting changes we are making to our schedules and our great benefits. Please go to careers.krafthines.com, search by Beaver Dam, and see all the opportunities we have available. We believe family time is important. Our new schedule will allow you to have a schedule that works for you and your family. All shifts are 12 hours with up to three to four days off per week. We also offer shift differentials and premiums for weekend work at Kraft Heinz. For every, where's the grocery list? I'll go to the store. So you'll fill up my car on the way home? Moment. If it has to do with your life and your money, it's a landmark moment. And Landmark Credit Union is here to help. With free checking accounts that offer you the choice of getting paid dividends on your balance or earning rewards points on your purchases. Opening an account is fast and simple and gives you access to Credit Hub, powered by Savvy Money, which shows your credit score so you can keep your finances healthy. Landmark Credit Union. Visit LandmarkCU.com, insured by NCUA. 63 seconds left in the game, 48-24 Columbus over Baldwin-Woodville on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. Uh, I mentioned that uh, uh, Davis Paulson's grandparents checked in. They said, just thought we should know. Maybe we should go down, Tim, to the Villages, Florida. They have over 55 golf courses down there. Just thought we should know. All right. That's from well, uh, Dr. what? I qualify. That's from Dr. I could, I could live there. That's from Dr. <laughs> Thomas Davis, the Villages. <laughs> Grandfather of Davis Paulson, number five. Thank you very much. You know what? I would like to do that sometime. Tim, let's take a golf trip to Florida sometime. <laughs> oh, man. But I want to go to Dallas, Wisconsin first. First. And oh, yeah, Chatech yeah, yeah. and all that. Here's the approach by Paulson, by the oh. way. Whoa, what a booming kick. I wanna, and it's a touchback. I want to know where this kid's going to go to school next year. This kid's a kicker. And he is a, a senior. Yes. And, yeah, with that leg, he's got to be going somewhere. Do, oh. Does anybody know <laughs> up here in the booth? Where he's playing, I'd love to know. Come on, Graham and Grandpa. Maybe let Graham us and know. Grandpa, yeah, let us know where Maybe he's going next year. There's a school 35 yards down, 35 uh, miles down the down the road here that uh, could use a kicker. You know. Start with the ball, first and ten. All right, it's going to be first and ten for Columbus from their own 20. But again, just 63 seconds remaining in this game. Well, wow, this has been a, a fun afternoon, and I want to thank all the folks that have been so kind to email us during the broadcast today. Even if you didn't email us, we just uh, enjoy knowing that you're tuned in on 95.3 WBEV or watching on Daily Dodge TV. You're always welcome here. And this is a handoff on first and 10. This is Roach. He could go. He's to the 30. Near sideline, 40, 50. One man to beat, 40, 30. He's going to go. 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Columbus. An 80-yard house call for Connor Roach with 49 seconds left. And that is... The cherry on top of the Sunday, 54-24 Columbus. <laughs> well, Connor Roach, not quite the week that he had last week, not quite, but today, eight carries for 134 yards and a touchdown. Last week, as I mentioned earlier, three carries for 151. I'm telling you, the kid is all conference in any school but Columbus. He just has the unfortunate thing that he has to yeah. play behind Colton Brunel. Hines to attempt the extra point. Kick is up. Hines is a pretty good kicker himself, and he makes it. So it's 55-24 Columbus back in one minute. Daily Dodge TV and 95.3 WBEV. Lamers Bus Lines, our community needs you. What drives you? Drive for Lamer. I wanted to do something good for my community, and now I get to make a difference in kids' lives. Call or visit us at golamers.com for more information. There's only so much fishing a retired guy can do. What drives you? Drive for Lamer. Our kids need us. I felt like I needed to do something good for my community. Call or visit golamers.com for more information. And I'm getting paid for it. Lamer's Bus Lines. Our community needs you. 
Hi, this is Sandy from McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam. We are proud to support all area athletes. While at home watching or listening to your favorite sports team, why not be comfortable? McKinstry's is a Lazy Boy Comfort Studio. We have sofas, recliners, sectionals, and reclining sofas in stock and ready for prompt delivery. Stop into McKinstry's Home Furnishings in downtown Beaver Dam and add comfort to your home. Year after year, McKinstry's. And as we come back to live action, the ensuing kickoff is into the end zone for a touchback. 49 seconds remaining in the ball game on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard. It's Columbus 55 and Baldwin Woodville 24. It'll be a McKinstry's Home Furnishings first down and 10 for the Blackhawks at their own 20. Well, if you've enjoyed this one, Make plans to be with us next weekend when Columbus plays Ellsworth in level three. Ellsworth, I, I know there's some Ellsworth fans tuned in today. Are you ready to make a nice little drive down here for a big game? Here is a first and 10. Warner handing it off to Gordon. Straight ahead across the 20 out to the 25. And for you Ellsworth fans, if you need some uh, you need some. Some tips on uh, good places to uh, stop and, uh, and eat when you're in the area or around the way. We got you covered. Tim and I, we can let you know. Well, just listen to our sponsors. We got that, a couple, that's exactly we, we it. Got you listen to the list of sponsors. Yeah. Within uh, walking distance of where we're at right now, both of them. All right. After a gain of five, second and five handoff, Gordon again, and he is dropped about a yard or so shy of the first down marker. Going to mark him at the 29. Just 12 seconds left. I think that's going to be the final play of the game. And they're not going to snap it again. So this one, the clock will head down to double zeros in your final score today here at Fireman's Park on the John Deere Horicon Work Scoreboard. Columbus 55, Baldwin Woodville 24. Congratulations to Baldwin Woodville on a fine season. They finish up with a record of 7-3. and three. And hats off to Columbus and Coach Andy Selgrad as they improve to 11-0 and advance to level three to take on Ellsworth next week here at Fireman's Park. Let's take a break. We'll take a three-minute break, and we're back right after this for the postgame show on 95.3 WBEV and Daily Dodge TV. John Deere not only builds great equipment, it's a great place to build your career and a high quality of life. You see, there's a certain kind of pride in being a part of a great American brand. It's the security that comes from learning new skills you'll have for a lifetime, a more confident future with unlimited growth opportunities, and the knowledge that you're valued and rewarded with a competitive benefits package. We're Deer Strong and Horicon Proud. Are you one of us? Looking for a change? A new career that checks all of the boxes? Excellent benefits? A great team culture and plenty of room to grow? Metalcraft of Mayville is looking for candidates like you to fill openings in Mayville, West Bend, and Beaver Dam. Metalcraft truly believes employees make the difference, offering paid training, top wages, and a regularly sanitized, safe workplace. Apply today at mtlcraft.com. Metalcraft of Mayville. At Prairie Ridge Health, we believe that orthopedics is more than surgery. It's about getting your life back. Our collaborative team of expert surgeons, therapists, and nurses work together to get you back to feeling pain-free in your daily life. Our innovative and proven program is designed to get you from hospital to home with confidence. Find out how the Prairie Ridge Health orthopedic team can help you at prairieridge.health. Prairie Ridge Health accepts over 70 major insurances, including Dean. Did you know that with most dental insurance plans, you don't actually have to go to the dentist offices they tell you to? That's right. Most dental insurance plans will pay towards your dental care, regardless if your dentist is in-network or out-of-network. At Preferred Dental Partners, we don't have contracts with any dental insurance companies. We do this so we can provide the best dental care possible, tailored to the patient's needs. After all, we treat people, not your insurance company. So stop letting your insurance bully you into a dentist office you don't like. Call Preferred Dental Partners today to find out why we're different. 
October means Ram Power Days at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam featuring scary low deals on brand new Ram trucks. Hello, this is Brent Reed, and with today's frightening interest rates, 1.9% for 60 months plus two grand off Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cabs will put those nightmares to rest. For you ghoulish sport utility buyers, take 2250 off Dodge Durango's or finance interest-free for 48 months plus $750 off. Let our family take care of your family at Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Beaver Dam and ReedChrysler.com. Hey, it's Stacy with Slumberland, Beaver Dam in Watertown. Stop in and see everything that our store has to offer. We built it just for you. We have mattresses, box springs, power bases, bedroom sets, furniture, living room sets, dining sets, everything that you would need to complete your entire home. We've got our interest-free financing and a really great local staff here to help you. So you've got all local people here to help you out from start to finish for anything that you would need. So stop in, shop local, and save big with us. You're watching the Daily Dodge Post Game Show, presented by John Deere. Columbus. Welcome into our post game show, brought to you by the good folks at John Deere Horicon Works. And on the John Deere Horicon Works scoreboard, final today, Division Four Level Two playoff game, Columbus 55 and Baldwin Woodville 24. Let's uh, take a look first of all, Tim, at some final uh, individual and team stats. All right, for the uh Baldwin Woodville Blackhawks uh, passing today. They were 18 for 34 for 261 yards. That uh, Columbus secondary was really, really tested this afternoon, and I can guarantee you that uh, Ellsworth paid attention today. It, it is vulnerable, but uh, on the other hand, the Blackhawks held to 61 yards rushing in this entire game in 31 carries. That's less than two yards per carry and uh, that's just not going to get it done in high school football when you become one-dimensional at this level and uh, it's just not going to work and uh, Columbus made them one-dimensional today they held their uh, quarterback uh, Mason Werner in check <laughs> you know when you take in the uh, sacks that uh, were just a couple here today but uh, he had eight carries for negative one yards and, and that's a real real key to the uh, ending to this ball game here today. Um, Cal Smith, uh, 12 carries for 28 yards, and Gordon near the end, he had uh, eight carries for 20 yards. Uh, tell you what, one of the favorite targets for um, Werner this afternoon was Colin Fritz. He snagged seven today for 124 yards. The kid's got a future in this game mm -hmm. as well. I'll tell you what, some really, really talented athletes on this Baldwin Woodville club and um, they're meeting right at this very moment out near the 50-yard line. And uh, my hat, even though I didn't wear one to the game this afternoon, is off to those guys. They had a, uh, a four-hour trip. It started at 6.30 this morning. And I'm sure that they're going to have uh, not only a, uh, a bit of a sour taste in their mouth tonight uh, when they go home for their uh, – hopefully they stop on the way going home. I'm sure and, they will and have, have a, a team bonding dinner somewhere. And, yeah. I, and I hope the parents over there and the fans – all find out where that is and treat these kids just the way they should be treated. They're, they're local. Uh, I wouldn't go so far as call them heroes, but, uh, you know, they're a bit of a celebrity, very honestly. Local in celebrities in Baldwin, town. Woodville. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. These kids are, deserve so much. They give up so much, uh, and, and they're I, I'm probably pretty sure they're all pretty good uh, students in the classroom as well. And, uh, boy, I tell you, it's tough to be an athlete as well as a good student at, uh, at the high school level this day and age. It's not an easy easy thing to do. Columbus, on the other hand, once again undefeated on the season. They were held in check at the uh, half. They only had 172 yards at the half. But uh, in this second half, uh, needless to say, it was capped by that 80-yard uh, run by Roach at the end, which sort of skews it just a little bit. But uh, very honestly, uh, an all-around uh, good game today. I think if you take a look at the passing stats, eh, probably could have improved just a bit, a little bit. Two for 12 for Columbus for but 56 yards, but uh, both of those receptions were in the first half and very honestly didn't need to pass in the second half. 43 carries on the ground for 339 yards. Uh, total net yards gained for Columbus 395 versus the 322 for the Blackhawks this afternoon. Um, Individually, uh, Nathan Cotter, eight carries for 38 yards. Colton Brunel, as usual, 
uh, 25 carries. I've got him for 288 yards. Uh, just another average ball game for for Colton Brunel. Connor Roach, um, near the end there, had uh, eight carries for 134 yards. And uh, Brady Link, a couple carries for 17. And uh, those are important carries, those two. I felt that both of them, uh, you know, they got first downs at the, at an opportune time when the things were still on the balance. And, uh, you know, when you've got that little bit of uh, Brady Link and his uh, ability to shed tacklers and his quickness to uh, get some speed and quickness around the outside opens up things for Brunel and Cotter on the inside. Let's uh, run down the second half scoring summary. At halftime, it was 27 to 17 Columbus. Third quarter, with 7.34 remaining in the third, Colton Brunel scored for the fifth time in the game a 29-yard touchdown run. Corbin Hines' extra point made it 34-17 Columbus at that juncture. Then with 5.16 to go in the third, just a couple minutes later, Nathan Cotter, the quarterback for Columbus, with a one-yard touchdown run. Extra point was good, 41-17 Columbus. And less than two minutes later, Cotter again found the end zone with a six-yard touchdown run. Heinz's extra point true, and it was 48-17 Columbus at that. I I should say, back up here. The uh, first Cotter touchdown run was in the third quarter. The second one actually was, flip ahead to the fourth quarter, was with uh, 3.57 to go in the fourth quarter. Uh, So we went went quite a stretch there without any scoring. Um, But by then, the the outcome was pretty much, uh, you know, not in doubt. Um, So Cotter had two touchdown runs, one in the third, one in the fourth. Uh, final scoring plays of the game with a minute and three seconds left in the game uh, was uh, Logan Gordon for bl- uh, the Blackhawks with a three-yard touchdown run. Extra point good by Paulson to make it 48-24 Columbus. And then the icing on the uh, cake, cherry on top of the Sunday with 49 seconds left in the fourth. Connor Roach of Columbus, an 80-yard touchdown run with an extra point tacked on to make it 55-24. And that was your final <clears throat> 55-24 Columbus over Baldwin Woodville and so again the Blackhawks hats off to them their season unfortunately comes to an end but uh, they had a fine season they finish up seven and three on the year Columbus is now 11 and 0 and the Cardinals the number one seed will take on second seeded Ellsworth in level three that's coming up next weekend now we're not sure yet if that game's going to be Friday night or Saturday Ellsworth has Basically, the same uh, distance to drive to get here as Baldwin-Woodville. So it's very possible we could see another Saturday afternoon game next weekend. But stay tuned to 95.3 WBEV and Daily Dodge, as we will let you know once we find out the exact time and date for that Level 3 game next weekend. Um, So that is going to uh, start to wrap things up here. I wanted to get to a few uh, a few emails here that came in uh, very late. Uh, this one says, uh, uh, from Joe Zander, says, ice cream is tasty, not as fast as Brunel or Roach, is what he's saying. Oh, uh, Joe, you're, uh, well, yeah, you're, you're right. Uh, I'd agree with that. Uh, one more email here. This one says, uh, what a great job done by the entire crew, especially the Cardinals. That's from Bill checking in today. Bill, thank you. He says, what a broadcast and what a game, Bill. That's for sure. Um, and then I got a text from our good friend Dennis Semrau, the dean of Madison Area High School Sports. He wanted me to say hi to you, Tim. And uh, Dennis, uh, Dennis, when are you and I going to do another game together? It's been a while. We got to we gotta get together and uh, call a game one of these uh, these days coming up here. It's been a while. I'll so. tell you what, that guy has, uh, has made so many uh, timelines. Uh, what's the word I'm, I'm looking at for the paper? For deadlines? The deadlines, that's the word I'm looking for. Thank you. And, and he deserves uh, a pat on the back and, and, a, and a whole lot more. He is uh, the absolute czar of uh, Madison High School sports. And uh, I, I, I would say one thing to Dennis. Golly, I wish they would cover the, uh, the, the small schools just a little bit better in the State Journal. Uh, I really miss it. Um, see what you can do. I know the guy has got a lot of experience with uh, the folks at the State Journal. And uh, if Anything you can do to help us out out here in, uh, you know, the, the, the boonies, if you will, we would surely appreciate it because these young fellas, these young athletes, boys, girls, whatever sport it may be, deserve it. 
Well, when you're faced with a challenge, how you respond determines the real winners. Rural Mutual believes there's something more important than just winning or losing a game. They believe that the team, school, and fans who support their athletes with dignity and class are the true champions. Rural Mutual is the proud sponsor of the WIAA Rural Mutual Insurance Sportsmanship Award since it started in 1965. From football to volleyball to soccer to tennis, the award recognizes more than team sportsmanship. It recognizes that sportsmanship matters in your community as well. Visit RuralMutual.com slash WIAA and see how our team and your community can work together to be true champions. Our game today brought to you by our presenting video sponsors, Columbus Family Dental and Hometown Glass and Improvement. Today's game also brought to you by John Deere Horicon Works. Reed Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, McKinstry's Home Furnishings, Lamer's Bus Lines, Farmers and Merchants Union Bank, Prairie Ridge Health, your Dare to Dream team at EXP Realty.